Lou Gallo Sports, King 5 News, tonight. These letters spell the very best in sports coverage. NBC Sports presents NFL 83. We get set to kick off week 11. And today it's a battle in the AFC East. Is Miami leading the division with four straight wins behind rookie quarterback Dan Marino? Take on the New England Patriots and their explosive young running back, Tony Collins. Or the Buffalo Bills, the New York Jets. Buffalo, one game behind Miami. And today, the 6-4 and four Bills will try to avenge the loss five weeks ago to Mark Gastineau and the Jets. The leading rusher in the AFC is rookie Kurt Warner. Today, he leads the Seahawks in against the Cardinals, plus Pittsburgh and Baltimore, Houston and Cincinnati. We kick off NFL 83. Who would have thought that with Cliff Stout at quarterback and not much of a passing game, the Steelers would be running away with it? Terry Bradshaw will join us in a couple of minutes. And Bill McAtee, there are some close races going on. Plenty of things have gotten awfully tied in the AFC East. We'll take a close look at the conference's toughest division and how things stack up now down the stretch. David? Bill, talk about tough. It's been a tough year for quarterbacks. No fewer than 11 starters have gone down injured. It's enough to make you ask whether one number one is enough anymore. Pete? I'll be talking about a guy who has 14 sacks on those quarterbacks. He doesn't dance. He plays for a team that wins. Clue, it's not Mark Gessner, then. <laughs> all right. Max, of course, will have his picks. So Ahmad Rashad will join us. Scores, highlights, all today on NFL 83. NBC Sports presents NFL 83. An inside look at the day in sports and a preview of today's football action. Brought to you by Volkswagen. By Cobra Cordless Telephones. Cobra, the name that means quality and innovation in cordless phones. And by Ace. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware man. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to NFL 83, Len Berman in New York. Question. Who are the only three quarterbacks to take every snap this year? Only three out of 28. Vince Ferragamo, Steve Barkowski, and Cliff Stout. The man Stout replaced, four-time Super Bowl champ Terry Bradshaw, will join us in a couple of minutes. First up, our game's on tap today in New England. A critical AFC matchup. First place, Miami's in town. The replay of the infamous snowplow game. Another big matchup, Buffalo at the Jets. Improving Cincinnati at Kansas City. Second place, Seattle in St. Louis. At 2 o'clock. It's Pittsburgh at Baltimore. The place is sold out for the second place Colts. Steelers have won six in a row. The first lifting of the blackout in Baltimore in four years. Welcome Colts viewers today. One note, remember the convict on work release who drove the snow plow last year in New England, making it easy for John Smith's winning field goal? Where is he now? Mark Henderson, it turns out, is out of jail. He's working for the Patriots, but they've taken him off the snow plow. He is in concessions, although they are not expecting snow in New England today. Kickoff, half an hour away now. Let's send you out to the stadium. It's a cold and gray day in St. Louis. Interconference action, Seattle against St. Louis. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. Jay Randolph along with Gene Washington. Here today, the Seahawks, six and four, very much in the playoff picture, and the man who's got them there is Chuck Knox. Knox, the NFL's Mr. Fix-It. He did it in Los Angeles, he did it in Buffalo, and now he's doing it in Seattle. His Seahawks are having a very good year, and this is a big game for them today. We have two talented young quarterbacks. Two very talented quarterbacks. They're both young. Neil Lomax is having his problems. He had five turnovers last week against the Redskins. But Dave Craig has come in. This is his third start, and he is playing fantastic football, and he really understands the Chuck Knox system, and that's don't turn the ball over yourself. The takeaway turnover factor has been a big item for both of these clubs. Stay tuned. Seattle and St. Louis coming up on NBC. Back in New York, Pete Axtelm, last week you went with all of those underdogs, and as luck would have it, it was the biggest week this year for the favorites. You call it luck, I call it a disaster, <laughs> but uh, we did get a few of them home, but uh, this year we're going right back to underdogs. Big upset special, the Houston Oilers will win their first game of the year today. Last week they lost 55-14. When Tampa Bay did that, they came back, almost beat Dallas. The Lions are going into Houston, and everyone knows that after wins, when they allowed under 14 points, the Lions are 4-16. They're easy prey, Houston plus the 6.5. The Bills are at Shea. 
against the Jets. The dog is 8-1 and one in this series in games played at Shea, and the Jets don't cover his favorites against anybody. Take the Bills, plus 3.5. The Packers are at the Vikings. Green Bay 0-6 on the road this week. Minnesota lost to Tampa Bay last week. What kind of week of practice do you think they had under Bud Grant? Vikings will come out smoking, minus the two and a half, take them. The Steelers are at the Colts before that big crowd that Len talked about. A problem for Pittsburgh. The last 11 times they played on natural grass outside their division, 0-11. Take the Colts, plus the three and a half. Dolphins are at New England. Replay of the snowplow game. Revenge for Shula. Need I say more? Dolphins minus three. Denver is at the Raiders. Elway's been on the bench a few weeks where he should have been when the season started. I think today he'll show he's growing up. Plunkett's just growing old. Take Denver plus the seven against the Raiders. Finally, the Cowboys are in San Diego against the Chargers. The mighty Cowboys, best record in the league. The Chargers hurt, lots of dissension, lots of problems. Looks easy, doesn't it? Cowboys are favored by nine. It's a master of the obvious. Too many points. Take the Chargers plus the nine. The final upset special win. I don't know, Pete. San Diego is virtually dead and gone. Dallas is playing like they have it on cruise control. How can you go with that one? Well, the Cowboys are cruising to the end of a three-game road trip, and they're the favorite. My stat man, Dan Gordon, points out what everybody on the subway should really know anyway. <laughs> teams in that situation have a record of 2-16-1 against the spread. Go, Ed Luther. <laughs> okay, or Matheson, if he should get it in. <laughs> Thanks, Axe. In other football news, Mike Haynes is now a Los Angeles Raider. He can play next week. How could a trade be made after the deadline, you ask? Well, the Raiders signed him technically as a free agent. The exchange of draft picks with the Patriots was purely incidental and illegal. Nice little deal. Earl Campbell said he wants to be traded. Later reports surfaced of a possible USFL deal with the San Antonio Gunslingers. Whatever happens, Campbell's got two years left on his Euler deal. In college bowl news, Illinois clinched the Rose Bowl berth yesterday by beating Indiana. Miami took a giant step closer to the Orange Bowl, beating Florida State in the final seconds. And Auburn appears Sugar Bowl bound after beating Georgia 13-7. Well, coming up on NFL 83, the wild scramble in the AFC East. Bill McAtee will be back to unscramble the X's and O's when we return in just a minute. No lights. And I was dreaming of a bright Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. At Ace, we light up your Christmas with the Noma 100 Mini Light Set. Multicolor or clear bulbs. Save indoors and out a November Best Buy at 444. Here's another Best Buy you can count on. The Sharp Solar Calculator. Runs on any kind of light, never needs batteries. And Best Buy priced at $6.97. For me? Merry Christmas. <laughs> Ace is the place. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware man. The Denner X Dandruff Shampoo Difference. On this side, I feel a tingling sensation. And there's no tingling on this side. Look what you used. I can't believe it. Celsum Blue has been my old standby. I've never had this feeling of working sensation as I had with the Denerex. Each shampoo has one medicine for dandruff. Only Denerex adds extra anti-itch medicine many dermatologists recommend. I'm not even going to look for anything else. I'm going straight for Denerex. Denerex shampoo or shampoo and conditioner fights dandruff and its itch with an extra relief medicine. Introducing the 1984 Volkswagen Jetta. It doesn't drive like a car. The Jetta has a German-built engine, German-built suspension, and the performance of a true German sports sedan. Yet, the Jetta costs only $7,390. You drive a car because you have to. You drive a Jetta because you love to. Jetta. It's not a car. It's a Volkswagen. When an alkaline battery goes dead, you throw it away and buy a new one. This is a GE rechargeable. When it goes dead, you recharge it. It costs more than batteries you throw away, but lasts up to four years. Used 10 hours a week, this toy would use over 300 long-life batteries to just two GE rechargeables. So if you're still throwing away batteries, you're throwing away a lot of money. The wildest scramble in the NFL has to be the AFC East. All five teams are technically alive. The Jets in last place, just three games out of first. Bill McAtee has more. No other division in the NFL has four teams at 500 or better. And we'll begin with the Miami Dolphins, because five weeks ago, the Dolphins were three and two. Then Don Shula moved Dan Marino in at quarterback to replace David Woodley. Now Miami has won four straight, and down the stretch, they'll play four of their last five games in the warm weather in the Orange Bowl at home. 
We'd rather play them at home, there's no question about that. And I'd rather play a football game in, in halfway decent weather conditions rather than uh, be subject to weather conditions. A lot of folks in the NFL are keeping their eyes on Frank Cush and his young Baltimore Colts. The Colts will get a test today against Pittsburgh, but with Curtis Dickey and Randy McMillan, Baltimore has the NFL's number one rushing attack. Frank Cush, though, is quick to credit his defense. I'm, I'm really surprised that we have been in just about every ball game, possibly with the exception of one or two. And I think the race certainly is uh, indicative of the type of play that you see in our division. The fans at Rich Stadium up in Buffalo have watched Joe Ferguson pass for more than 2,000 yards and have seen one of the NFL's most versatile backs in Joe Cribb. But Buffalo has had problems in 83 with consistency and injuries. It takes a lot of character to come hard down the hard road, and, and we do have that. And we can fight off the injuries that we've had and, and come up with big efforts from a number of people. We're going to be right in there. In New England, Ron Meyer has quieted much of the dissension from last year, and the Patriots have found themselves an explosive young running back in Tony Collins. Still, New England, at 5-5, five and five, faces an uphill battle. You progress in a, in a seven-day life cycle in the AFC East, uh, from tremendous highs to tremendous lows, and your team has just got to be able to go out and empty its bucket totally every single Sunday to get the job done. For Joe Walton and the four and six New York Jets, the season has been one of major disappointments. And the criticism of the Jets has fallen squarely on the shoulders of quarterback Richard Todd, who has thrown 16 interceptions. Now, the schedule as we approach the playoffs favors Miami. The Dolphins face teams with a combined record of 23 and 37. In Baltimore, the Colts face teams that combine at 500, but one of those teams is Houston at 0 and 10. Buffalo has a slightly tougher schedule on paper. They still have to play the Raiders and the Rams. Ron Meyer may have his work cut out for him. The Patriots still have to play the Dolphins today, the Rams, New Orleans, and Seattle. And finally, will anything go right for Joe Walton? The Jets have the division's toughest schedule down the stretch. They still have to play four interdivisional games, plus the Pittsburgh Steelers and New Orleans Saints. If the Jets make the playoffs now with that schedule, you'd have to say Joe Walton and company really deserved it. And Lenny, the key might well be now that a team has to prove they can beat Miami with Dan Marino at quarterback. Particularly playing those late games, as you pointed out, in the Orange Bowl where Miami's very tough. Right. Okay, thank you, Bill. Ahmad Rashad, your experience playing with Buffalo and Minnesota. What is it like for the players at this point in the season? Well, Lenny, the season can either be a lot of fun at this point or it becomes extremely long. Now, if you're not in contention for the playoff race, then the season becomes very long. The paper start to write about next year and the players start thinking about not getting hurt if you're in contention then everything takes care of itself because every game becomes a big game it's easy to get fired up uh, all you can ask for as a player is to be in control of your own destiny all you have to do is win every game and not worry about who loses uh, Miami Dolphins have been most consistent in this category and they've got a shot at probably winning that division uh, Baltimore Buffalo New England they're pretty much in the middle uh, they're in a fight to just try to stay alive for the playoffs now the New York Jets, they are in a tough situation. There's a lot of pressure on them. They've not only got to win every game, but they got to hope some of the teams at the top lose. Uh, if they can win today, get Freeman McNeil healthy, they still got a shot to get back in the playoff, but it's a long road. And it's a long shot with some of those other injury problems in the line. Okay, thank you, Ahmad. Coming up, we'll talk about some quarterback changes. It's very difficult to keep track of them all this year. Dave Marish will give that a shot when we continue on NFL 83 in just a minute. Volkswagen. Come on in, take a seat. We're gonna tell you what the big boys eat. Name is Wheaties, pick a wheat. Now you know what the big boys eat. Hello, milk. Come on in, jump in, berry, have a swim. Wheaties, Wheaties, not too sweet. Now go tell your mama what the big boys of your good breakfast. If you thought the cordless phone was the last word in convenience, wait till you see what Cobra has added. They've combined a Cobra phone cordless telephone with a clock and a radio. 
where you used to have these three, now you've got this beautiful one. So you've got everything you need here. Oh, hi. Plus a Cobra phone cordless telephone that goes with you anywhere around your home that you need a phone. When you're ready to cut the cord, see all the exciting cordless phone ideas from Cobra. Dave Marish, it seems this year that the quarterbacks are dropping like flies. Len, the next one will make it an even dozen. So far this NFL season, there have been no fewer than 11 quarterbacks who have gone down injured. It's enough to make you wonder if one number one will get it done anymore. Let's run down the list. Terry Bradshaw actually came into the season too hurt to play. Fortunately for Chuck Knoll, his Steelers had Cliff Stout in reserve. And even more fortunately, Pittsburgh's great defense and depth at running back have taken up the slack on the Sundays when Stout stank. When Cincinnati's Ken Anderson went down, his neck pulled into pretzel shape by Pittsburgh's Keith Gary, Turk Schonert stepped in and within a couple of games helped to get the slow-starting Bengals into gear. Ken Stabler's battered ribs put Dave Wilson at the head of the Saints' march, while in Minnesota, Steve Dills has taken charge after Tommy Kramer's body took damage. So far, both the Saints and the Vikes are still in the race with their substitute quarterbacks. When Neil Lomax got hurt, the Cardinals came apart. But even if Jim Hart had done better, it's doubtful the Cards would have been contenders. And even though both Phil Simms and Jeff Rutledge lost their giant quarterbacking jobs through injuries, that only made a bad New York season worse. The L.A. Raiders and Denver Broncos both switched quarterbacks early in the year when starters Jim Plunkett and John Elway played poorly. But now, both successful replacements, Mark Wilson and Steve DeBerg, are out injured, and both teams' playoff chances depend on revivals by Plunkett and Elway. But by far the most devastating injury at quarterback was the one that felled the Chargers' Dan Fouts. Injuries to quarterbacks seem to happen in cycles every four or five years or whatever. But I also think think that in the last couple of years there's been a more conscious effort by defenses to put more pressure on the quarterback and you're seeing especially this year more blitzes by safeties linebackers and cornerbacks than you have in the past uh, the passing game has been so successful the last couple of years that the only they find the only way to stop the, a good passing attack is to get that quarterback down San Diego coach Don Coriel says ironically he thought he was prepared this year for a catastrophe at quarterback we played Ed Luther almost uh, completely the preseason. We didn't want to play Dan. We didn't want to risk uh, his injury. And he really didn't need the experience uh, that much, while Ed did need the experience. Luther's ineffectiveness might make some coaches wish they had another option. Most coaches feel that they, if they have two quarterbacks, that they, they're comfortable. But now you, you probably see the teams, more teams carrying three quarterbacks. But Coach Coriel isn't so sure. The realities are, he says, that you've got time to get just one quarterback really ready to start on Sunday. I don't think you can effectively take two quarterbacks and during one week's time, the few uh, uh, hours you have on the practice field, train two quarterbacks to run a team. I think an offense, uh, offensive team looks towards that quarterback as its leader, and it takes a while for it to adjust to a new guy filling that position. It is now week 11, and a lot of Pittsburgh Steeler fans thought by now Terry Bradshaw might well be their quarterback. Well, there's some people at KTAL in Shreveport, Louisiana, who thought that Terry Bradshaw would be sitting in that chair talking with us. So did we. <laughs> Terry has been unavoidably delayed, apparently. So we're going to sack that quarterback and go to another All-Pro, Bob Greasy, who is standing by at Shea Stadium. Bob, why is it so difficult for a club to shift quarterbacks? Well, David, I think uh, basically uh, I think the teams get used to uh, to one quarterback. In the case of Fouts, uh, it's his uh, his cadence at the line of scrimmage, his timing with the receivers, and normally, although the second team quarterback may get some work with the number one receivers, basically the the, the majority of that time is spent with those receivers by the number one quarterback. So he's the guy that's in there getting all the work. Now, of course, in Miami's greatest year, you got hurt, and Earl Morrill stepped in, and gee, it looked like there were no waves and no seams to that at all. Is that a tribute to Coach Shula's preparation or what? Well, I think it's a, a tribute to Don Shula. I also to, I think it's a, a, a great uh, tribute to Earl Morrow, who could, who has done it before, who had done it before many times, step in and, and, and played very well. But I think 
more and more today, you have to have two quarterbacks that can step in and play. I think there are more injuries because there's more passing in the league. They restricted the uh, defense to some degree, made it easier to pass, and there are more teams passing, and that puts the quarterback in a vulnerable position a lot more than he has been in the past. Bob, have you been surprised how easily Dan Marino has taken over for David Woodley with Miami this year? Well, I've, I've been surprised. I'd be lying if I said I expected it all along. The thing that I do uh, I believe is that the Don Shula really handled him uh, as best as he could. He got him in a couple of games early. He had a good preseason. Got in a couple of the early games that the Dolphins were out of. Lost in the, to the Raiders. Uh, was behind against New Orleans. Got Marino in there late in the ball game, and he played well. So when he switched to Marino late in the, later on in the season, he was coming in from a from a strength uh, aspect rather than had being in there early in the season, such as Elway had been, and being battered and bruised and scarred and and uh, and booed a lot. So he really came in from a from a from an area that he was coming in confident and very strong. Bob, thanks very much. Bob Greasy from Shea. And there's one quarterback switch that went very smoothly. That's right. Perhaps the only one. Ahmad Rashad, let's go to another all-pro here. When you were in Minnesota, Fran Tarkenton went down. Bob Lee had to come in. What is it like for a wide receiver dealing with that kind of switch? Well, Lenny, uh, Bud Grant uh, was just like Don Shula, that during the course of practice, we always took a play at about the same amount of time with the first-string quarterback and the second-string quarterback. They had the same coach, and they went into a meeting room every day, and they tried to get the cadence the same and, and do the same things. It's the same offense so that's that's not changed you just have a different quarterback and it's very important that the second string quarterback throws as many routes to the first string receivers as the first string quarterback and a smart coach usually does that during the course of the week I found what Fouts uh, said interesting uh, perhaps we're gonna see more rules changes now to protect quarterbacks even more and Terry Bradshaw come on back all is forgiven we'll have more on NFL 83 after our kickoff feature today OJ Simpson Bull Spice presents kickoff Kickoff is brought to you by Old Spice Antiperspirant and Deodorant. They help stop underarm alarm 24 hours a day. Maybe there's a more exciting runner in a galaxy far, far away, but if your choices are limited to planet Earth, you get to feast your eyes on O.J. Simpson. He took the football world by storm. All-American at USC, back-to-back -back Rose Bowls, Heisman Trophy, drafted number one in the NFL by the Buffalo Bills. He was a computer matchup of grace and style with size and strength. He had a range of speeds from very fast to even faster. And once in the open, he had that fabulous snaking, sliding, slipping motion. A leg here, a hip there, a stop, a shift, a burst, goodbye. Knees ended his career at San Francisco, but he made a legitimate run at Jim Brown's lifetime rushing record and wound up second with over 11,000 yards and his name all over the record books. But maybe the best symbol of OJ was 1973, his fifth year in the pros, his prime, when the juice broke Brown's single season record and ran for 2,003 yards. The celebration that followed wasn't limited to the snowy field at Shea Stadium. It spread to everyone who ever watched him run with a football. And even though we knew that Simpson would someday stop running, the images we had, images of O.J., would not. It usually happens late in the day. Your underarm alarm goes off. Telling the world you need odor protection that keeps going as long as you do. You should have used Old Spice. It's true. That Old Spice freshness helps stop underarm alarm 24 hours a day. Happened to me at a party last night. You should have used Old Spice. Old Spice helps stop underarm alarm for 24 hours. And now look for Old Spice solid antiperspirant in a new musk scent. chainsaw I went right to a pooling dealer that's Poland feature for feature dollar for dollar it's hard to beat a pool Poland and a pooling dealer can help you pick just the right saw for the job seems a saw this good deserves a dealer this good so when you're looking for a tough dependable chainsaw look for a dealer that sells Poland Poland that's what I said Poland 
You said Poland? Ask them. Poland. No matter how you say it, the name means quality. I said Poland, didn't I? As we contemplate the future, as we seek security, there are so many good financial plans we've heard. But our money builds up faster, and from risk we're always free. With our GNA annuities tax deferred. Retirement comes closer constantly, but our money's safe and there are no fees. It's earning high interest and it's guaranteed. The GNA annuity is available at Pacific First Federal as the Pacific annuity. You know the saying, the squeaky wheel always gets the grease. It seems to be the noisy guys in sports who get most of the media attention. Well, Pete Axtell now with a story about one of the quiet guys who gets the job done. Mark Gastineau, the media's defensive end, had a wonderful game last Sunday. The Jets' high-profile hero was in the Baltimore backfield all day. And each time he got a sack, he went into his familiar dance. Every time I looked up, Gastineau seemed to be dancing. The problem was when I looked further up at the scoreboard. Did anybody tell Mark that amid his individual celebrations, his team was losing and plunging into last place? It is tempting to take off on Gastineau's selfish act as a symbol of the Jets' futility this year. But it happens that last week's games held a more positive lesson. While Gastineau was leaping, the best defensive end in the NFL was playing much closer to the ground. In fact, Doug Betters of Miami twice scrambled across the San Francisco turf to recover fumbles that stopped 49er drives. Of course, Betters didn't dance. He would have been quick to emphasize the teammates who had caused the fumbles. In fact, when I chatted with him recently, Doug also deflected praise for his glorious sack total this season. He pointed out that he's been lucky to draw several blockers who were injured or inexperienced. Ever hear Gastineau say something like that? No, Betters represents the best of the Shula system, the team concept, the quiet pursuit of serious goals. But it occurs to me that he stands for even more. Essayist Joan Didion once sought a definition of self-respect. People with self-respect, she wrote, exhibit a certain toughness, a kind of moral nerve. They display what was once called character, a quality which, although approved in the abstract, sometimes loses ground to other more instantly negotiable virtues. The Gastineau commercials are indeed negotiable in quick coin. The virtues of a betters are more like certain precious metals, hard, unyielding, and destined to be valued for a very long time. And whichever your taste in uh, defensive ends, both should have a good day today. They both go against uh, second string linemen. Should be a lot of fireworks, Mike. Okay. Thank you, Pete Axnell. And that'll do it for NFL 83. We'll be here throughout the day with scores, highlights, updates. Clark Gaines will join us at halftime. I'm Len Berman. Enjoy the game, everybody. Tuesday, it's Father Against Son in Bay City. Hey, hold it right there, All-Star. A grudge explodes. I think I can kick your butt. What are you doing? Tuesday. Tony Ventrella, Sports, King 5 News, weeknights. Kurt Warner is the top rusher in the American Football Conference. He has nearly 900 yards. Warner, the remarkable rookie from Penn State, leads the Seahawks of Seattle. Today, they play the Cardinals of St. Louis. They have a big back. Their all-time leading rusher, Otis Anderson, out of Miami. He'll be a factor today. Bush Stadium in St. Louis, the site of interconference action, Seattle against St. Louis. And today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the Texas Instruments home computer, creating useful products and services for you. And by Honda, the world's largest manufacturer of motorcycles and ATC three-wheelers. Follow the leader. He's on a Honda. It's a gray day in St. Louis, the temperature about 40 degrees. Interconference action, the Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks. And a very pleasant good afternoon to you, everybody. Jay Randolph to call a play and alongside Gene Washington. Today, we're going to see two very talented young quarterbacks. Well, they're both young, but they're very good. Dave Craig is making his third start. He's performing very well in Chuck Knox's system. You know, he's a guy who understands what they want, and that's to be fairly conservative, control the ball. Here he's throwing a touchdown to his favorite receiver, and that's Largent. But on the other side of the field, Neil Lomax. You know, he had his problems last week against the Redskins, five turnovers, but he's got what it takes to win. He's got that great attitude, and of course, he's got a tremendous arm. Here he's going to throw a strike. This is to Twilly, number 83, and he's going to be a factor today. And of course, Neil Lomax is familiar to many of you in the Northwest. He played at Portland State. 
and set all kinds of NCAA records. Speaking of records, Seahawks are six and four and very much in the playoff picture. And I guess the reason for their success and the problems the Cardinals have had really can be spelled out in the takeaway turnover category. Well, turnovers are so very important. As you can see, the Seahawks, their defense has taken the ball away from their opponents 38 times. They've only turned it over themselves 20. They're plus 18. That's second in the NFL behind the Redskins for plus 25. Conversely, the Cardinals, they've only taken the ball away 27 times, but they've given it up on offense 37 minus 10. Jim Hannafin, the gray-haired gentleman, 50 years old from Compton, California. His Cardinals, 3-6-1 and one on the year. It's been a disappointing time for his club. Neil Donahue will kick off. It is Dixon along with Hughes back. And that's Zachary Dixon out over the 10 at the 15. And he gets to about the 19-yard line on the return. Dixon brought down on the play by number 59, Paul Davis, along with Chet Parlavecchio, number 57. It'll be Dave Craig, along with Kurt Warner and David Hughes. Johns, Largent, and Young are the wide receivers for Seattle, coached by Chuck Knox. Essick, McKenzie, Bush, Pratt, and August. Very fine offensive line. They've been doing an excellent job. First and 10. Ball just shy of the 20-yard line. And Craig calling on Kurt Warner right off the bat. Warner getting to the 24-yard line. He starts the day with 889 yards. The defensive line for the Cardinals, Baker Galloway, Grooms, and Greer. The linebacking situation, they've had to move E.J. Jr. outside because of an injury. Washington, Smith, Nelson, and Perrin are in the secondary. Second down and five at the 25-yard line. Kurt Warner, the single setback. And Warner just across the 25-yard line. He was met by Curtis Greer, number 75. Warner, 10 touchdowns, tops in the AFC, first in AFC rushing, a 4.5 average. And last week versus Denver, 134 yards. Jay, Chris Castor and Byron Walker have just come into the football game. Seattle will employ four wide receivers an awful lot of the time. In this situation, they're going with three wide. And they'll go from that spread formation that allows the quarterback to see everybody right in a hurry. Third down and three. Out of the shotgun. Craig over the middle, and it's complete for a first down. Out at the 33-yard line, Steve Largent. Benny Perrin, number 23, had the coverage. Our first penalty of the game, holding indicated against Seattle. The referee today is Ben Dright from Denver, Colorado. Tom Myers, Dale Williams, Bill Reynolds, Don Wedge, Ed Ferguson, and Ron Spittler are the rest of the crew. And Chuck Knox a little upset as the call goes against the Seahawks. Offensive holding, number 67. Reggie McKenzie, the man who used to loose the juice in Buffalo and has now been playing very well and pulling out for Kurt Warner. He committed the infraction. Reggie's contribution is more than just blocking. He's such a tremendous team leader. And I think that's one of the main reasons why Seattle's doing so well this year. Tremendous leadership from their veteran players. Third down and 13. Craig has time. Gets it away, and it's complete. That's Largent again. Largent getting it to the 26-yard line, short of the first down, about three yards short. Making the play for the Cardinals, Lionel Washington, number 48. Well, Largent is a fantastic receiver, and one of the things that he does so well is read the coverages. You see, he went back, running his hook pattern, and when he turned to find the quarterback, his lane was blocked, so he moved over, he found the open lane. Craig got the ball to him, but it wasn't quite enough for the first down. Jeff West is on to do the punting. West, who used to play for St. Louis, later for San Diego. 37.9 punting average, has good hang time. A high punt. Willard Harrell takes it at the 35. The ball is loose. A big scramble. They're still going for it all the way down at the 15. And 
and it looks like the Cardinals have it. Or is it the Seahawks underneath? Let's see. The Cardinals have the football at the nine-yard line. In underneath there, number 76, Stafford Mays. Well, when the field is wet, particularly in a field like AstroTurf, when it gets wet, that ball can just skid around. It's gonna, five or six people have a chance to pick it up, but nobody can get a handle. It's cold. You know, it's not as easy to pick up this ball as it might appear. Stafford Mays came up with it. It was number 22, Dave Brown, the cornerback for the Seahawks, that dislodged that ball, a 39-yard punt. But the Cardinals have it now all the way back at the nine-yard line. Neil Lomax at the quarterback. In motion, Roy Green. And this is Otis Anderson. Anderson banging up over the 15-yard line. Otis Anderson starting the day with 658 yards. Greg Gaines, 56, along with Butler, 53. Lomax working with Anderson and the fine blocker Wayne Morris out of SMU. Green, Tilly, and Marsh, a good receiving core. Green is a speed burner. The line, Randy Clark with Stephen Bostick, Sharp, and Robbins. Second down and two. The ball out at the 17-yard line. No score. Anderson again getting the call. The first down. Anderson over the 30-yard line. John Harris, the free safety, number 44, on the tackle. You're seeing Otis Anderson at his best here in the early going. Number one draft choice back in 1979. Well, Seattle's going to have to play a lot better defense because... Anderson gets this ball, and he runs about five yards, and no one is touching him. They've decided to run to the side of number 77. That's Jeff Bryant over there. He's playing this year in a 3-4 defense, Jay, which means he's going to be a little tighter to the center, and he can't get out wide quite as fast as that 3-4 defense. That was a 16-yard pickup. Stepping through, penalty marker goes down. Morris getting out to the 39-yard line. Jeff Bryant, number 77, made the tackle. And as we indicated, a penalty marker down on the play. Referee Ben Wright discussing it. That's Dale Williams, the head linesman there with him. Wright still in a discussion. You know, Jay, Seattle's defense, they're ranked uh, 27th in the league. They're, you know, they sort of bend an awful lot. They don't they don't break, otherwise they wouldn't be where they are. Let's listen to this call. Well, it's just going to go off. against the Cardinals. He'll give us the infraction here in a minute. That's Jim Hannafin. He was the top college receiver in his days at California in 52 and 54. Longtime assistant here for Don Coriel, also an assistant at San Diego. Personal foul on the offense, number 63. Hand in the face. Tootie Robbins, number 63, the second-year man from East Carolina. Well, there he is in the middle of your screen, number 63, and you can see that he has his hand right in the face. Now, that's Jacob Green, and, you know, sometimes you have to try to do all you can when you got to block Mr. Green. Green has had a wonderful year up to now. First and 24, back at the 17. A little delay to Anderson. Anderson out to the 25 and almost broke it for more. He seems to be able to find running room in the thick of things. Greg Gaines, 56, and Sheldon Robinson, 57, on the tackle. You know, Anderson got off to a slow start at the beginning of this season. He only had 95 yards in his first three games. But over the last several games, six as a matter of fact, he's averaged more than 90 yards per game. And he has that, you know, he has that same kind of movement that Kurt Warner has. The ability to go one direction, stop, and go the other direction in a hurry. Anderson has 31 yards already. And he cracks across the 30 to the 32. The Seahawks, Jacob Green on the tackle. Green, Nash, and Bryant in that defensive line. Schultz, Robinson, Butler, and Gaines are the backers. 
Justin Brown, Easley, and Harris in the secondary. Easley with a turf toe has not practiced all week, but he is playing, gutting it out today. Third down and 12 from the 32-yard line. No score with 9.50 left in the first quarter. Out of the shotgun, Neil Lomax from Lake Oswego, Oregon. Lomax going long. down easily inside the 40-yard line. Couldn't hold on. Paul Moyer, number 21, had the coverage. You know, I think I know what was going through Roy's mind. Number 27 is Gregory Johnson. He thinks Gregory's going to deflect the ball, and he's waiting for the deflection. The ball just jumped right on top of him, right through his hands, and I can imagine what he's saying to himself now. The you know. top punter in the NFC last year, and number one right now, Carl Birdsong, 44.1 average. Paul Johns is back to receive the punt. Johns at the 20. 25, and a fine play coming downfield. Number 64, Randy Clark on the specialty unit. 9.26 to play, no score. The way Thunderbird looks has a great deal to do with how it drives. The shape of the front helps the driver feel the road. The shape of the doors and mirrors smooths and quiets the air. The shape of the rear helps press the tires to the pavement. Thunderbird, the way it looks, improves the way it drives. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? There's something special happening at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Fresh buttermilk biscuits made from scratch. Our chicken and biscuits are perfect match. Light and lofty, they're made from scratch. We start with real buttermilk, and we make them fresh all through the day. Fresh, like our chicken, because that's the Colonel's way. Fresh buttermilk biscuits made from scratch. Our chicken and biscuits are perfect match. One more way, we do chicken right. The head man of the Seahawks, Chuck Knox, 51 years old, from Swickley, Pennsylvania. Some people say that his offense is dull, but he's won every place he's been. <laughs> when he was with L.A., he beat us five years in a row with that dull offense down there. It works. We'll talk a little bit about his philosophy. First down at the 26-yard line. David Hughes gets the call, and Hughes coughed up the football, and the Cardinals have it. Hughes fumbling. the file, number 78, Eloy Grooms, who came over from New Orleans. Well, this is just the opposite of what Chuck Knox tries to accomplish, particularly when you're backed up in your own part of the field. You don't want to turn the ball over under any circumstances. Hold on to the football, punt it away, let the other team make the mistake. This is how Seattle has won games by doing just the opposite, taking it away from the other team inside their own, you know, inside their own 30-yard line. First down for the Cardinals after the turnover. Lomax to the air, and he overthrows his intended receiver, tight end Doug Marsh. Penalty marker down. Marsh might have been held up. And we'll wait and see what the call is. It could have been offensive pass interference, too. It's going to be a personal foul against uh, number 56. That's Greg Gaines because the ball was thrown over Marsh's head. He had no chance to get it. But watch this. The ball is going to be thrown to Marsh, but he doesn't have any chance for it. Now watch Greg Gaines. He's going to come in. He's going to hit him with an elbow. Watch. Right there. Yeah, really right close the lined him, didn't he? Yeah. This will march the ball down to the 14. Personal foul, defense number 56. Gaines from Tennessee. Of course, the Seahawks are hurting at the linebacker position. Michael Jackson is out. Eugene Williams is out. Joe Norman came back this week. He's been out with a knee injury. First and 10 now at the 14-yard line. That's Roy Green going in motion. And He held on. Joe Nash, number 
number 72, the nose man, came in there, put the clamps on him. Anderson lost the ball momentarily, but got it back. The inside linebacker, number 57, Shelton Robertson, had a chance to get the ball. He was trying to be conservative. He tried to fall on it, put his body But the ball scooted out again. Watch when, when Otis Anderson loses his football, number 57. He's going to have a chance to get it. There you see him in the left side of your screen. And watch, he's going to try to fall on it, try to get his body around it. Can't quite pull it in. Otis comes up to the football. Loss of three yards on the play. Armstrong or Anderson again to the 15-yard line. Mark Hicks, number 63, on the tackle. Over at Kansas City, the Chiefs have taken an early lead over Cincinnati, 9.04 for the first period. A Lowry field goal of 36 yards. No score here with eight minutes left in the first quarter. The Cardinals, after the turnover, Jim Hannafin shaking his head. Third down, 12. Shotgun. They're going to be looking for Roy Green, but he's going to have double coverage, I think. Outstanding defensive back, but the move was so beautiful. He's gonna go across the field, but watch. He stops, turns, now he comes back the other way. He catches Dave Brown going the opposite direction for the touchdown. Second leading receiver in the NFC. 52 catches coming into today's game. Neil O'Donohue kicks the point after. And with 7.41 left to play in the first quarter. The St. Louis Cardinals lead the Seattle Seahawks. It's seven to nothing. Back with more in a moment. As soon as this mud dries, I figure we can drive right out of here. The new Big Red three-wheeler costs so little that you can get one for each of your crew and do a lot of different jobs at the same time. It's the Honda three-wheeler that comes standard with an electric starter, shaft drive, and reverse. Maybe we ought to get some of those. If we had them, we'd be working. Big Red, only from Honda. Working? A beer? What beer? Any beer. Any beer. Listen here, any beer. They had a test around here and they tasted lots of beer. The results of the test are in. And any beer didn't win. <laughs> no beer on the bar. Tastes better than only no contender, no pretender. Not one. No beer on the bar. Tastes better than only for it only and your second tonight. Monday will Boone's family be disgraced when a prank backfires and could ruin his future. I'm afraid I'll have to suspend the boys. But that means Boone won't graduate. Monday. Roy Green got the touchdown. That was a fantastic defense back two years ago. That's right. O'Donohue kicks off. Zachary Dixon at the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Up the sideline. Dixon may go all the way. from Baltimore on waivers. 94 yards, Seattle touchdown. You know, you might expect that from Seattle on a punt return to Paul Johns. Zachary Dixon, he gets some good blocks, sets him up, comes inside, then bounces back to the outside. And he's, boy, look at him striding out to the distance. Oh, that's beautiful. That's one of the great plays in football. That's the first kickoff return for a touchdown, we're told, for Seattle. Norm Johnson to kick the point after. Jim Zorn holding. And it didn't take very long for the Seahawks to tie matters up here in St. Louis. With 7.24 left to play in the first quarter, 
Zachary Dixon has gone 94 yards on the kickoff return. Seattle and St. Louis are knotted up at seven. While Atari keeps trying to sell you new systems, like the 5200, with ColecoVision you only need one system, because ColecoVision expands to give you a Super Action controller set with Super Action Baseball, a driving module with Turbo, and only ColecoVision plugs into the Atom module to become the complete Atom computer system. Plus, you get $150 in vacation savings certificates. $150, good for any vacation package, if you buy ColecoVision now. Sorry, Atari. You're about to see the Ford Ranger leap to new heights in quality. Based on a survey of owner-reported problems during the first three months, Ranger quality was unbeaten by any major small truck maker. And Ranger has V6 power. More horsepower than Chevy S10 of the imports. And a wider cab than any small truck. For toughness, horsepower, and unbeaten quality, it's Ranger down-to-earth tough. The best-built American trucks are built. Ford tough. Zachary Dixon's all bundled up now, but he just went 94 yards, and what a cakewalk down that far sideline. And I'm sure this special teams coach, Rusty Tillman, ran the full distance with him. <laughs> Johnson to kick off. Earl Farrell, the man in the middle, to receive. Farrell coming up at the 7, at the 10, 15, out at the 24-yard line. Farrell goes down and for the Seahawks it was 63 the linebacker Hicks that made the play a Lomax back in the quarterback the Cardinals this telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals and the NFL is prohibited Otis Anderson has 41 yards on the ground, rushing on six carries. It's a 7-7 game here in the first quarter. Marsh goes in motion. Lomax has a lot of time. Gets it out to Randy Love. Love up the sideline to the 40-yard line. Randy Love in his fifth season. A free agent originally drafted by New England. Bruce Scholes, 58, the linebacker, making the play. Stump Mitchell is not playing because of a turf toe injury for the Cardinals, and we see love in there today. But watch the block from number 68, the left guard. That was Terry Steve. That's the block that made the play. And it was set up very well because you, you thought he was going to throw downfield because he had maximum pass protection. He held his tight end in the block, so you had the idea maybe he's going to go long. The result was a nicely set up screen pass. 316. Anderson behind his quarterback gets the ball and gets up to the 44-yard line. 33 career touchdowns and 25 career 100-yard games for Otis Anderson. Again, Bruce Scholes, 58 on the tackle. New England in the first quarter has scored on a one-yard run by Grogan, seven to nothing. In the Kansas City-Cincinnati action, they're tied up now 3-3. We can update that score for you as Breach has just kicked the field goal. And Cleveland leads Tampa Bay 3-0 on a Matt Barr field goal. Here it's 7-7. Second down and six. Anderson falling down. We mentioned the artificial surface here, and it is a little damp in spots. We had a light snow here last night and a rather wet evening. They worked on the field today, but this is an artificial surface that is not in the best of shape. They're going to put a new surface down here. It has some bad seams, some wet spots, as you can see. Those seams are a real problem for a fella on occasion. You get, that's one of the reasons why you can come up with turf toe. That's the pitcher's foul during baseball season. You can see that shaded area. That's the spot where it's wet. So you get down in that area, hit the ground, it's tough to hold on to the ball. Third down and seven, out of the shotgun. Lomax throws, and it is incomplete. He was trying to go to Pat Tilly, the great little veteran from Louisiana Tech. He's caught 31 passes this season, and it was Gregory Johnson who was coming in there and putting a lot of pressure on Lomax. Punting time for the Cardinals, Carl Birdsong, the third-year man from Southwest Oklahoma. Well, number 27 is Gregory Johnson, who's a defensive back, 
They could see him. He just breezed by Lomax. As a matter of fact, I didn't think Neal would be able to get the pass away, but he did. Bird song earlier a 48-yarder. This one a wobbly kick. John's at the 20. John's to the 23-yard line, and that's it. Stop made by Roy Green, number 81, downfield. A 38-yard punt. Five minutes and 34 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Seattle and St. Louis tied at seven. Ford Escort. It's engineered with four-wheel independent suspension for a smoother ride than this Japanese import. It's engineered with more passenger room than this Japanese import. Plus, Escort has more standard features than this Japanese import. And now with the new available two-liter diesel engine, Ford Escort is engineered for better mileage ratings than this Japanese import. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? One computer company has been shaping the way business does business for 99 years, NCR. Today, NCR high technology puts computer power where business needs it most. Computer power that helps shoppers check out faster as it controls a supermarket's inventory. Computer power to provide banking services 24 hours every day. NCR, shaping the way business does business. Sunday, it's an NFL 83 doubleheader. The Raiders look to the playoffs against the Bills from Buffalo. Then, the Wild West show continues. The Chiefs take on the Cowboys, plus other regional action on NBC. A look at some of the crowd here. 40 degrees on a gray day in St. Louis. Crowd of about 35,000 watching the action. First down for Dave Craig and the Seahawks. Single setback, Kurt Warner. Warner over the 30. He's to the 31 yard line. They've got two tight ends in there now. Young 87 and Metzelar is 88. Charlie Baker, the linebacker, number 52 on the tackle. Jan Stenerud with a field goal has put Green Bay on top, 3 0 over Minnesota. Philadelphia, Jaworski to quick, 47 yarder. Philadelphia leading Chicago in the early going. And Florian Kemp has kicked the 50 yard field goal. Houston leading three to nothing over Detroit. 7-7 here in St. Louis. Second down and two at the 32. Warner again. And a big play made by number 78, Eloy Grooms. Grooms who played at Tennessee Tech. Now in his ninth year, as I mentioned earlier, he came over from New Orleans and he's played very, very well. Grooms, along with number 60, the left end Al Bubba Baker, who came from Detroit, have helped to improve the Cardinals' defensive line play. The football Cardinals rank sixth on defense in the NFC, ninth against the rush, fourth against the pass, third down and four. Seattle has come in with their three wide receiver set. They're in the spread formation or the shotgun, and they'll probably be looking underneath the cover. A great catch made by Larkin. Boy, Craig did an excellent job of evading the rush. He got that ball away, and Largent did a fine, fine job. Great camera work right here, as we'll show it to you. It's a 19-yard pickup. E.J. Jr. was isolated out there on Largent. Well, look, they run the same pass pattern they ran before, which was successful. Largent has an option. He goes down to the middle of the field, and it's up to him to find the open lane. He went to the middle. That wasn't open, and he slid back to the outside. He got the reception, picked up the first down. Cedric Mack, number 47, beaten on the play. Hughes is back in the backfield. Craig is hit just as he gets it away. Incomplete pass, and it was Bubba Baker. You see him there, number 60. He came from Detroit in the deal that sent Mike Dawson up to Michigan. Bubba came to camp a little overweight. He's worked very hard and played well. Well, Al has great speed. I played with him in Detroit. He's put on a little, little more weight this year, but he did that intentionally. He wants to be a little bigger. You know, he switched sides. He's on the side now where teams run to a lot, so he needs that added weight. In Detroit, he played over on the other side, and the responsibility there primarily is to rush the passing. Second down and 10. Warner and Hughes in the backfield with Dave Craig. And that's Warner. Warner still going. Short of the
the first down at the 44-yard line. Charlie Baker, number 52, made the tackle. Good blocking by 61. Robert Pratt, the right guard, and Blair Bush, the former Bengal, who's at center, number 59. Well, Kurt Warner, you can see that he was a little frustrated. You know, he, he got up off the ground, and he sort of said, you know, I should have gotten more, but it's incredible. He turned a play that was going to be a no-gainer into a very positive gain, but that's the mark of a great back. You know, and it encourages his linemen. Let's watch again. You know, look at the way he runs. Keeps his balance. Strong legs. He takes a play that was going to be a loss for half yard, and he gains five yards. Three tight ends in the game. Warner trying to get the first down, and he does. Warner to the 40-yard line. Young, Metzelars, and Tice. All three of the tight ends were in there. Warner now on six carries, 25 yards. Dave Aarons, 58, made the tackle for St. Louis. We have two minutes, 15 seconds left to play. We're in the first quarter. The Cardinals and Seahawks tied 7-7. Lomax to Green for 15 yards for St. Louis. And Dixon, 94 yards on a kickoff return. Metzelars and Young, two tight ends in there. Just Warner behind Craig. Largent and Johns, the wide receiver. Cross was E.J. Jr. Jr. playing outside this week because of an injury to Bob Harris. The uh, former All-American from Alabama had to sit out a four-game suspension because of a drug incident problem. He was charged with having some substances in the offseason. Has come back, and the Cardinals really have needed him in their defensive scheme. Well, E.J. Jr. is one of the three or four best linebackers in all of football. They had the blitz because this is a situation where Seattle loved to go play action on first down. E.J. Jr. knew it. They blitzed. Got a good result. Second and 17 and a bad pass. Largent tried to come up with it, but the ball was thrown behind him. Craig starts the day with 40 completions out of 65 tosses, 586 yards, and a 61.5%. Kansas City now leading Cincinnati 10-3 over at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. And Jay, Cleveland is up 10-0 on Tampa Bay. You know, I was talking to some of the Cardinal players early, and, and that's one of the things they talk of, talked about is the philosophy of Seattle's offense and how they love to run, 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 and then go play action on first down. And they guessed right on that last play of the blitz. Out of the shotgun, third and 17. They're showing the blitz again. Here they come. Craig downfield, incomplete. Craig was trying to get it down to number 89, Byron Walker. There's Jimmy Zorn. Zorn has been very supportive of Craig since Craig has taken over, talking things over with Chuck Knox. They were trying to beat the blitz, and he couldn't get it away quick enough on target. The receivers, that was the receiver's responsibility. If you're a wide receiver and you get a safety blitz, you're supposed to break off your pattern. Craig was looking for one of his receivers, waiting, waiting, waiting. He held the ball as, as long as he could, but Byron Walker, he didn't quite see it, and he wasn't ready. Jeff West to do the punting. His first punt was a 39-yarder. Steve Bird, a rookie from Eastern Kentucky, is downfield, and he takes it at the 12. And Bird gets to the 13, maybe the 14-yard line. The specialty unit downfield very quickly, leading the way number 30 for the Seahawks, or number 33, Dan Dornick. The next time you make a long-distance business call, think about this. Long-distance is important to every business. And only one long-distance company can connect you with anyone, anywhere in the world. AT&T. We can custom design a network for you and help increase productivity and manage costs. That's enough to satisfy any business, even accounting. AT&T. We're what you call long-distance. The square edge car has no room in the future. World champion driver, Jackie Stewart. I don't think you're going to see any manufacturer producing that box look. It's a yesterday's car. Ford Motor Company have pioneered airflow management. And I think 
within the next two or three years, you will see the competitors producing cars that will be remarkably similar to what Ford are now producing today. Have you driven the best-built American cars? Have you driven a Ford lately? Arnold Palmer, Gary Player, Jack Nicklaus, and Tom Watson. Golf's greatest foursome plays the Skins Game, only on NBC Sports. The Big Red Line, they call them. The lovely ladies who entertain here. And the football Cardinals tied with Seattle 7-7. A minute left in the first quarter. First down from the 14. Otis Anderson. Very close to a first down. He got it to the 24-yard line, which Bruce Scholes, number 58, on the tackle. At just about a 10-yard pickup. It is a first down. Well, someone did a very good job of blocking against the nose tackle for Seattle, number 72, Joe Nash. And I would imagine that it's number 71, Joe Bostic, who's the right guard for the Cardinals. And they refer to him as, quote, a player, unquote. That's the way they describe it. From the 25, first down for the Cardinals, Lomax. On a time, now he bails out to Anderson. Anderson out to the 34-yard line, and it looked like he might have picked up another first down. Well, Lomax wanted to throw the ball to Roy Green. He had Roy Green on a little out pattern. He pump faked him, and then Roy took up, went up long, but Dave Brown was not fooled. He was right there. That's why he threw the ball off to Otis Anderson. Keith Butler, 53, one of the inside linebackers, and Scholes, number 58, the outside linebacker, made the play. And the gun sounds. That is the end of the first quarter here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. Seattle Seahawks, St. Louis Cardinals, 7-7. Seven, seven. Leaner, meaner, the new breed of four-wheel drive. The leaner, meaner-sized Cherokee and Wagoneer from Jeep. Higher ground clearance, higher mileage than Bronco 2 and Blazer 4x4. Legendary Jeep traction, hot or cold. Leaner, meaner, the new breed of four-wheel drive, only from Jeep. When IBM personal computer owners look for good software, where can they turn? To IBM for programs that help you keep up with modern times. Business programs, entertainment, productivity, education, and more. The variety you want with the quality you expect in the growing library of IBM personal computer software. A well-balanced selection at a store near you. There's more for your car at Sears' biggest automotive sale of the year. Weather Handler all-season radials as low as $99 a set of four. Road Handler Highway Radials as low as $44.99 each. Save $100 on Sears Heavy Duty 1.5 ton floor jack, only $99.99. And save $18 on a Sears 48 battery, just $39.99 with trade. Confidence installed day and night. There's more for your life at Sears. With Gene Washington, this is Jay Randolph and our entire staff. Hope you're enjoying the action from Bush Stadium in St. Louis. First and ten from the 35-yard line for the Cardinals. And off going to Wayne Morris. Morris, the eight-year veteran from SMU. A 3.5 rushing average. Keith Butler, 53 on the tackle. With a little help from the outside linebacker, Bruce Schultz. In the first quarter stats, the Seahawks 28 yards rushing. The Cardinals surprisingly 51 yards ahead of them. Time of possession, important fact that they're pretty close. 736 for the Seahawks, 724 for the Cardinals. And all of that 51 yards credited to Otis Anderson. Anderson goes down. A big play was made by Greg Gaines. Gaines, the second year man from Tennessee. He's playing that right outside spot and did a nice job there. Last week, the Seahawks defeated the Broncos 27-19. Well, Greg Gaines is going to come in, and you can see that Wayne Morris tries to get the block on him, but he just jumps over and makes the tackle. He didn't have that many tackles coming in today's game, only 18, but he's done a very good job filling in for Michael Jackson. 
Now out of the shotgun on third down and 10 from the 35. Lomax steps up. On the run at the 40, 45. Lomax down to the 30-yard line. And a first down and more. Now that's what this fella does on occasion. He gives you that extra dimension, something that Jimmy Zorn did very well, of course, for Seattle. Well, if you have a quarterback who's mobile, he can get in these situations, he can run out, and he can also look for a receiver at the same time. He sees that he has a clear path for about 15 or 20 yards. Now watch the smart thing that he's going to do right here. Get down. Don't take the blow. 35-yard pickup. Jacob Green had a shot at him. But he just slipped away. So it's first down, St. Louis at the Seattle 30-yard line. Early in the second quarter. Anderson at the 25. Still going. Anderson all the way down to the 23-yard line. Well, Seattle had the right defense call. Number 21, Paul Boyer, had come in from his halfback position on like a blitz. He had... Otis in the backfield, but Otis just sidestepped him, broke another tackle, picked up six, seven yards on another play that should have been a loss. Gaines 56 and Harris 44 made the play. Anderson now with 57 yards on 11 carries. Second down and three. Anderson the single setback. Good pass attempt. play on eye level view of the TD. Well, you're going to see it come from the quarterback, but Roy Green runs my favorite pass pattern of all, and that's called a quarter pattern. What you see is the tail end of it. What you didn't see is that he sold the post move. He had carried Justin believing he was going to the post. He stopped, came back to the corner, touchdown. And the extra point by Neil O'Donohue is good. 12 minutes left to play in the first half. A 23-yard pass, Lomax to Green, and the Cardinals take the lead. Chevrolet, taking charge. When you buy a dependable Chevy Chevette, you'll find you can also afford some of the other good things in life. Like extra money for a growing family, or an honest-to-goodness vacation. Because Chevette's so dependable, 97% ever built are still going strong. So you can plan to own your Chevette for years, and begin putting your money into something other than a car. Chevrolet! And you! Taking charge! The RCA Digital Command Center is a remote control for your new RCA Color Track 2000. But this unique remote does more than control your TV. It also controls a new RCA video cassette recorder and video disc player. One remote control for total control. The RCA Digital Command Center. A giant step forward at the touch of a finger. See your RCA dealer for special values through December 24th. Tuesday, it's Father Against Son and Bay City. Hey, hold it right there, All-Star. A grudge explodes. I think I can kick your butt. Why don't you do it? Tuesday. Roy Green has nine touchdowns now on the year. He runs pass routes as well as any receiver in the league. Really takes his time and very precise. Zachary Dixon on the return, and he's out to about the 22-yard line. Piled up at the 22. Well, Jay, you live here in St. Louis. These Cardinals, they're playing football much better than their record indicates. It's the first time I've seen them this year, but hey, well, they've had some inconsistency. Jim Hannafin has wondered about it. He has a young club. Lomax has been inconsistent at times. And of course, we talked about the turnover takeaway ratio early. They have given up the ball just too many times. They had six chances to beat New England, um, New York here on a Monday night. They couldn't do it. They're three, six, and one, but they're tough. Warner to the 25-yard line. Warner stopped by E.J. Jr., number 54, 78 in there. Grooms along with Galloway, 65. 
You know, Seattle has come off a couple of really tough games, you know, emotional games playing the Raiders in Denver. And this is a game that's a normal time to let down. You come in and you're playing the Cardinals. They're not playing very well. And this is one thing that Seattle really must guard against. And I know Charlie Young, the tight end, he said, this is the most important game of the season for us. We must win this game. Second down and nine. Warner has 28 yards. Craig slips. Now throws. It's complete. That is number 85, Paul Johns. Very close to a first down near the 34-yard line. Let's go to NFL 83 for an update. Thank you, Jay Randolph and Foxborough. Uma Von Shaman for the Miami Dolphins, 52 yards away. He drills it. Miami's now within 7-3 of the Patriots. Back to you, Jay. Thank you, Len Berman. And those Miami Dolphins, of course, have been a hot club since Dan Marino took over at quarterback for Don Shula. There's Ken Easley. Easley did not practice this week. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. Gray. Throws incomplete. Bubba Baker with a good pass rush again. Baker 60 and Greer 75 coming from the ends, putting the pressure on. Al Baker is one of the toughest defensive ends in football to block, particularly against the pass. And he just flat out beats Steve August. But Bubba's beat an awful lot of people. He comes into today's game with seven sacks. He's got 46 tackles. When you throw in the ball, you're going to have to double team number 60. He's as good as they come when it comes to rushing the pass. There's Knox talking with his uh, running back coach, Chick Harris. Craig is three out of seven, 36 yards. Second down and 10 from the 35. Warner trying to get outside and run out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Lee Nelson got to him first, number 38, 51. Kurt Allerman, the middle linebacker. Allerman has been put in that middle linebacking spot today and Junior moved to the right outside position because of the knee surgery to Bob Harris. And they, they missed Bob Harris. He's a rookie, but he was playing very well for them. Junior, of course, was a number one draft choice in 81, an All-American for Fair Bryant at Alabama. Third down, nine. Jackson and Johns and Largent are all in there. The shotgun. That's Largent going in motion, and Craig stepped up. Rose intercepted. Coming back with it is Cedric Mack. Mack gets it back to the 40-yard line. Craig couldn't find anybody down there. He shouldn't have put that ball in the air. He, he shouldn't have put it up. They were running the same pattern that they've run before, which has worked for them. That's where Largent gets down in the middle of the field. Let's take a look at this coverage. You're going to see Largent come into the middle of the field. Now watch him going to the right. The quarterback, Craig, does not see number 47. Sneaks underneath, picks up the interception. As you said, Jay, he threw that ball going down. He never should have put it in the air at all. We'll be right back after this. All its own. Nice game. Enjoy it. This is the automobile you probably didn't expect from Mercedes Benz. On the test track, it moves comfortably at more than 100 miles an hour. Its unique rear suspension provides extraordinary handling. Its quick reflexes exemplify legendary Mercedes Benz engineering. More than just a new automobile. It is a new class of automobile. The new Mercedes-Benz 190 class. Today's game is brought to you by Chevrolet, the official U.S. cars and trucks of the 14th Olympic Winter Games. Today's game is brought to you by Chevrolet, the official U.S. cars and trucks of the 14th Olympic Winter Games. 
Chevrolet and you taking charge. By United Airlines, people who fly for a living fly United's friendly skies. And by RCA, the maker of innovative video products that will open your eyes. First to 10 from the 39-yard line, Lomax throws to Tilly, and Tilly takes it in right off his shoe tops at the 30-yard line. Dave Brown, number 22, made the tackle. Tilly, a number four draft choice back in 76. A very talented little man. He does a good job in heavy traffic. Well, he did an outstanding job in that play of reading the coverage. Jay, this is our first down control. This is the number of times that on first down when you gain four yards or more. Seattle, only two out of seven. Look at the Cardinals, eight out of 10. What you try to get is 50%. Lomax is five out of seven, 72 yards, two touchdowns. Anderson at the 25, at the 20. Anderson to the 19-yard line. O.J., they call him. Bruce Scholes, number 58, made the tackle. Anderson broke Chuck Foreman's records at Miami. Miami with that victory yesterday. They look like they're going to be in the Orange Bowl against Nebraska. Some fine bowl action coming up for you on January 2nd on NBC. The Rose Bowl will have Illinois and probably the University of Washington. Anderson now 68 yards on 12 carries. First down at the 19-yard line. Wayne Morris getting near the 16. Morris, a great little blocker, used sparingly as a running back. They like to send him in there in front of Anderson to do the job. Gaines, 56, and Nash, 72 on the tackle. The Jim Hannafin there, the seventh head coach in the football Cardinals history since they moved here from Chicago back in 1960. Their offensive line is doing an outstanding job of blocking. They have a great runner in Anderson, but the runner is only as good as the offensive line. Second down and eight. Lomax over the middle and incomplete. Tilly's looking for an interference call. Perry Justin, number 26, had the coverage. <laughs> Well, he's looking around for good reason because, you know, the official could have thrown that one. You see number 57, that's Sheldon Robinson, the inside linebacker, putting the pressure on our watch. Terry Justin comes in, but he did the smart thing. He reached over with his left hand to try to knock the ball away. He had his right hand there. You know, they, they'd say, if you miss it, make sure you have one hand to hold on to. The official decided not to call it. Maybe he said, no harm, no foul. Third down and eight from the 17. Seahawks showing a blitz. Shotgun for the Cardinals. Lomax on the run. Throwing, and it is complete. Complete to Pat Tilly. Tilly was hit, ended up out of bounds. The official on the play said that he could have made the catch and gotten his feet down had not Gregory Johnson, 27, made the hit. So it's a completion. But the key is that Lomax had the ability to scramble out. The blitz came up the middle. He saw it coming. He went to the outside. He had the speed to get there. And as you mentioned, Jay, Tilly went up. The official decided, had he not been pushed, he would have come down in bounds. He gets the reception. Cardinals leading 14 to 7. 747 left in the first half. First and goal to go at the seven yard. together but watch the fake watch what happens he fakes that pitch now he rolls out I thought he was going to run it in for the touchdown but Roy Green had come across the middle you know, he's going to lope across the middle like it's going to be a running play then he reverses field came back out wide open for the touchdown O'Donohue kicks the point Lomax now is 7 out of 10 88 yards 
three touchdowns to Green. Back with more in a moment. Chevy Charge is taking charge. Are you tough enough to make it with the U.S. Army? Chevy trucks are. The Army contracted for 53,000 tough, full-size Chevy pickups and blazers. These rugged four-wheel drives are regular production vehicles powered by the proven 6.2-liter diesel V8. Need a truck as tough as the U.S. Army's? Just sign up at your Chevy dealers today. Chevy Tough is taking charge. Every morning, whether I'm here in Latrobe or on the road, I'm out there making sure all the parts are working. Nobody has to sell me on keeping in shape. I guess that's why I've always been sold on Pennzoil protection. Pennzoil helps keep the equipment in shape. And believe me, I'm a guy who believes in taking care of the old equipment. Pennzoil. Quality protection. Ask for it. Sunday, it's an NFL 83 doubleheader. The Raiders look to the playoffs against the Bills from Buffalo. Then the Wild West show continues. The Chiefs take on the Cowboys, plus other regional action on NBC. Well, there's the man of the moment, Roy Green. Six touchdowns in the last three games. Three catches, three TDs a day. That's the first time in his career that he's had three touchdowns in one game. Zachary Dixon returning at the 15 to the 20 and to the 22 yard line number 58 Dave Aaron's on the specialty unit with help from Victor Heflin number 46 making the play well, Seattle finds themselves in trouble here 21 to 7 Dave Craig coming back on to try and get something going for these Seahawks but you know I don't think the Seahawks are going to try to get it all back at once that's not their style you know, it's still early in the football game. I think they will continue to do what they've done best, which is run the football, give that ball to Kurt Warner, let him make some things happen. Now, this is atypical of Seattle. They have two turnovers, and the Carls don't have any. Craig is three out of seven, 36 yards. Kurt Warner. Cardinal defense keying on Warner. He got to the 24-yard line. E.J. Jr. again, number 54, and David Galloway, 65, making the play. The Seahawks with Young, 87, and Metzelar's 88 in the game, and just Kurt Warner there as the single setback. Warner, nine carries, 32 yards. You know, Jay, I mentioned before, this is a natural situation for a team to let down like Seattle after two big victories over the Raiders in Denver. Now what they have to do is settle down, and say, okay, let's play football. Warner sweeping to the right. Warner, a first down as he gets to the 34-yard line. Warner with the first down, the stop made by number 54, Junior, and Lee Nelson, 38. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Jay Randolph. And along with Gene Washington, the action between Seattle and St. Louis. Coming your way from Bush Stadium in St. Louis, 21 to 7. The Cardinals lead it. First down from the 34-yard line for Seattle. Six minutes to play, second quarter. Largent at the 40-yard line. Largent gliding in, going to his knees, timing that catch perfectly. He beat Benny Perrin, the free safety, but I don't know what Perrin could have done about this. There's nothing at all he could do about it. It was perfectly thrown ball. Largent broke to the middle. The ball was there on time. Nothing you can do about it. That's number 48 out there who plays pretty well. You know, he's a good man-to-man -man cover. That's Lionel Washington. Perrin coming over trying to help. But to no avail. Largent does it again. 26-yard pickup. Warner, penalty marker Warner goes right down. Right. Warner got just about a yard on the play. Kurt Allerman, number 51, made the tackle for the Cardinals. And we'll see what the infraction is. The referee, Ben Dreith. Mentioned last Sunday, the Seahawks beat the Broncos 27 to 19. Warner rushed for a career high of 134 yards. The Cardinals lost at Washington 45 to 7. Chuck Knox was a 
great high school coach in Pennsylvania. There is Jim Hannafin. Played for Toronto at one time. Holding offense number 64. The call against Ron Essick, number 64, the four-year veteran from Green Valley State. In this situation, it's first and 20. Seattle, oftentimes in this situation, instead of trying to get it all back, they might run a draw play or they might run the ball. They don't, they don't like to get in situations where they have to force them to try to get a lot of yardage on one play. David Hughes in the backfield now. The throw down for Warner. No call. Warner covered by E.J. Jr. and Warner having something to say to the official over there. He thought he was interfered with, but there was no flag, no call, and it'll be second down. Well, he had E.J. Jr. out there covering him, and Jr. is very quick. He's got a lot of size. I thought it was going to be interference, too. Let's... Well... The problem is that E.J. Jr. was not looking for the football. If you, if you look back for the football and if you run into the guy who's trying to catch it, you know, both people have a right for it, then the officials usually don't call. And I think what Kurt was saying is, hey, he wasn't looking at the ball anyway. He interfered with it. Second down and 20. From the shotgun, Dave Craig steps up, throws wide open on the near side, and Dornick, Dornick at the 30, and bumped out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Dornick catching his 16th pass of the season. Dornick, of course, from Washington State, now in medical school at the University of Washington. But watch this move that he makes on number 45, Leonard Smith. He catches the football. Now watch this move. Boop, sets him up, comes back inside. That's beautiful. That's a great play on the part of Dan Dornick. 34 yards and a first down at the 16-yard line. Dornick comes out of the game. Going wide to the right is Largent. Set to the left is Paul Johns. Warner and Hughes in the backfield. It's Warner. And Warner is in trouble. A fine play by Lee Nelson. Reggie McKenzie was leading the way, but Nelson snuck around the strong safety. Nelson, who played at Florida State now in his eighth season, and he made the play on Warner. Well, he's a strong guy, uh, Lee Nelson is. He leads the team in tackles. He has 76 coming into today's game. And there you saw a shot of uh, Norm Johnson, who's getting ready, getting that leg warmed up out there just in case he has to make an attempt for a field goal. There's 38. Man, I was talking about the strong safety. That's Lee Nelson. The Cardinals really miss one of their talented corners, Jeff Griffin. He's out with a broken arm. He's broken it three times in the same place. Second down and nine. Craig steps up, throws, touchdown, Largent. Largent scores. Beat Lionel Washington, the rookie, number 48. And Craig threw that one very nicely. It was a great reception by Steve Largent, but Dave Craig made the play because St. Louis is blitzing. They decided to gamble. They blitzed. Seattle had maximum protection. Craig waited, he waited, he waited, and there's nobody at all of football who can guard a good receiver for more than three and a half seconds man to man. It can't be done. Seventh touchdown of the season for Largent. Johnson, the extra point. It's up and it's good. So Seattle bounces back, getting the big play. The pass to Dornick, and then the touchdown to Steve Largent. That's Steve Largent's seventh touchdown of the season. Great catch. We'll be back in a moment. Most Air Express companies charge extra for delivery to out-of-the-way places. We don't. In fact, Federal Express can get your package to more places overnight than anybody. So if you have something that absolutely positively has to be somewhere, give us a call. <laughs> Federal Express. Why fool around with anyone else? Chevrolet taking charge. 
Four years ago, we introduced Chevy Citation, and it became America's most popular front-drive car. But that wasn't good enough for the engineers. Since that time, they've improved its performance, improved its ride, improved its comfort. And after making so many engineering refinements, we made one more change. The name, announcing Chevy Citation 2. Chevrolet! And you. Taking charge! Basketball is back with a rematch of the championship game. Houston Spice Slamma Jamma battled the national champs, the Wolfpack of North Carolina State, the Hall of Fame tip-off classic on the home of great college basketball, NBC Sports. 4-18 left to play in the first half, and it's 21-14. to 14. Well, there's number 80. That's Steve Large, the fellow who came up with that touchdown reception. Here's the kickoff coming down. Coming back with it is Randy Love. Love getting it out to the 23-yard line. Dornick, number 35, making the tackle. We're showing you these scores. No score between Buffalo and the Jets. Green Bay, 17 to nothing over Minnesota. Kansas City leading Cincinnati 10 to 6. Breach has just kicked a 31-yard field goal. They're late in the second quarter. Philadelphia and Chicago are now 7-7. Cleveland leads Tampa Bay 10 to nothing. They're just moving into the second quarter. Detroit 10, Houston 3, and Pittsburgh and Baltimore are just getting underway. First and 10 from the 24-yard line. Anderson can't find much. Keith Butler coming from his inside linebacking spot, making the tackle. I'll tell you, those linebackers are going to have to be very active because Otis Anderson you know, not only is he fast, but he's so strong. Here's a comparison. This is a rushing Warner. 11 attempts, 42 yards. Anderson, 13 attempts, 68 yards. These are two of the best. Neil Lomax. Number two draft pick in 81. The NCAA all-time passing and total offense leader when he played at Portland State. Seven out of ten. 88 yards, three touchdowns, all to green. This went out to Anderson. Anderson up to the 30 and steps out of bounds at the 31-yard line. You got an idea of Anderson's speed on that play because he just flat outran Shelton Robinson, the linebacker. Robinson had a step on him. Now watch this. Anderson gets the ball. Watch this. Looks at it and just runs right by him. Now you'll watch him step out of bounds right here and not sacrifice himself. He's been criticized by the fans here in St. Louis for that. But the fans are not carrying the football. You're right. Thank you. <laughs> Third down and one. 320 left to play in the first half. Penalty marker down, and down goes Anderson. He slipped. Coming in number 53, Keith Butler again. Butler now at an inside linebacker spot, number two draft pick in 78 from Memphis State. Well, Jacob Green is saying that the Cardinals drew them offside. The officials are down there discussing it, but they say no. Dan Dreith indicates offside against the Seattle Seahawks. Well, there you can see number 72, the nose tackle in the middle. That's Joe Nash. He jumped. But Jacob Green All says, hey, defense they pulled us down. off. Oh, Chuck he Knox is hot. Is man. Boy, is he upset. Joe Nash is a real street fighter. There's the penalty yardage. Knox doing some heavy politicking over there. Lomax, 8 of 11, 96 yards. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Play action, going long, Roy Green got it, touchdown St. Louis, what is it? touchdown Patrick. 63 yards on the play, Lomax and Green are putting on a show. It's a great play because John Harris, the free safety, is there. But watch, he comes underneath the free safety. Look at 44. He's there. He's got the man covered, but he looks. 
runs the ball. Roy Green comes back underneath for the touchdown. And that's why Neil Lomax had his hands on his helmet. He said, I don't believe it. He threw up a pass that should have been intercepted, but Roy Green turns it into a touchdown. O'Donoghue picks the point. Four touchdowns for Green. A personal record for him as we look again. 63-yard bomb. Touchdown, St. Louis. A colorful breakthrough. Canon's 270F. It lets you make up to 27 copies a minute, reduces, enlarges, can even feed and collate automatically. But the 270F does more. It lets you communicate in color at a price that keeps you in the black. The Canon NP270F. For information, call toll free. Tonight you're still a bachelor. Tomorrow's almost here. So while you're still a free man, let's bring on the beer. Catches 108 yards, four TDs. But look, he watches the football. He concentrates all the way. John Harris lost sight of the football, as I mentioned before. And I think Neil Lomax realized when he threw that ball up, he says, oh, I might have an interception. But no, Roy Green picks it off and goes in for six. A very short kick coming down to number 86. Mike Tice, the Mike tight Tice end. Mike Tice, the tight end. <laughs> Tice took that short kick from O'Donohue and returned it up to the 28-yard line. And there's a penalty marker down. Ben Dreit having quite a discussion. A lot of screaming going on down there. Well, whenever there's some screaming, Al Bubba Baker's going to be in the middle of it. Purple foul, 42 red, 21 white. Offset. Bill Whitaker for the Cardinals. And I don't know who the call is on the Seahawks. But Chuck Knox is very upset. Offsetting personal foul. Boy, Knox is having a rough first half. 28 to 14, the Cardinals leading Seattle with 258 left in the first half. And now a whistle and a timeout. Got to put a new football in play. Well, that half of the field is still damp. They'll change the ball every so often. It's a little difficult to run down when you're going to try to make some sharp cuts on that half of the field. Craig throwing and oh, just out of the outstretched hands. And they're going to get a call against Lionel Washington, the rookie. Largent almost came up with a catch. Interference against Lionel Washington, the rookie from Tulane. There he is, number four draft choice. Largent almost comes up with this catch. Defense, Look at this. Pass interference, 48. He almost the first gets it. down. It's, uh, well, they're discussing. That's number 48, Lionel Washington. And I think he's saying to his buddy out there, he says, well, where did I interfere with him? I think he must have felt he played it pretty well, but the ball is just shy of midfield. We have two minutes, 54 seconds left to go in this first half. 28 to 14, the Cardinals lead. Kurt Warner, no gain. Warner was tripped up by Grooms, number 78. Also, David Galloway, number 65, was there. You know, Jay, we've seen Chuck Knox yelling and screaming on the sidelines, and I'm sure he has reason. He's justified. But you know what happens? That official, he starts to think about it. And every so often, they make up for it. 
Well, there's the score. Miami trailing New England in the second quarter, 14 to 6. Jets have taken the lead over Buffalo, 7 0. Kansas City leading Cincinnati. Here it's 28 to 14, Cardinals. Second and 10 from the 49. Craig, under pressure, goes down back at the 38 yard line. EJ Jr., outstanding linebacker, coming from the outside on a linebacker blitz. Baker and Junior were both coming after him. The problem, Jay, though, is that turf. They're playing on the half of the field where it's still wet. He tries to set up. Look, slips right out from underneath. But if he had slipped out, I don't know. He had a lot of pressure on him. I think Baker might have gotten there anyway. There's number 54, EJ Junior, and he also was coming in the middle. Two-minute warning is given. We'll take a timeout. The Cardinals lead the Seahawks. 28 to 14. It's easy to stay in shape when you have to. If you're not a professional athlete, it's tougher, but just as important. Because even if your career doesn't depend on staying in shape, your health does. If you're not in the condition you'd like, ask your doctor to suggest a nutrition and exercise program for someone in your age group and physical condition. You might play sports or go to a gym. Just taking brisk walks can be one of the best ways to exercise. And the rewards are great. You'll work better, sleep better, reduce your chances of heart attack and stroke, and even ease daily stress. Good nutrition is the other half of the program. The goal is to get the right mix of nutrients for your age, size, and level of activity. For some help in planning a healthful nutrition and exercise program, write the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. Don't just be an armchair quarterback, get in the game. Preceding announcement was furnished as a public service for the National Football League. Next Sunday, join Len Berman. NFL 83 kicks it off, a doubleheader. 12.30 Eastern, the Raiders at Buffalo, and you see the other games there. Second half of our doubleheader features an interconference battle between the Chiefs and the Cowboys or Seattle at Denver. Check your local listings for the games and times in your area. Johns, Walker, and Largent are all in there. Third and 20, out of the shotgun, Dave Craig. pass comes to Largent. He gets it to the 44-yard line. Benny Perrin knocked him out of bounds, and Seattle will have to give the football up. Time stopped with a minute and 45 left to go in the first half. Cardinals took a timeout. Chuck Knox is still rather upset about the proceedings here in the first half. Neil Lomax has thrown four touchdown passes to Roy Green. 15 yards, 23 yards, 7 yards, and 63 yards. Jim Hannafin's Cardinals are leading 28 to 14. Makes chewing that gum a lot more pleasant, doesn't it? Next Sunday, the Cardinals will play the Chargers here in another interconference game that many of you will see on NBC. And the Seahawks will play the Broncos at Mile High Stadium in Denver. West to do the punting. Two punts today, a 37-yard average. Steve Bird downfield. A high hanger, fair catch called for. Bird takes it in at the 20-yard line. 36-yard punt, and Neil Lomax has a minute and 38 seconds with which to operate. Timeouts remaining. Cardinals have two and Seattle three. Lomax having a brilliant first half. He and Green hooking up for four touchdowns. Green has put on some display. If you want to know how to play the position of wide receiver, get a tape of this football game and watch Mr. Green. It's been a clinic, and who should know better than the gentleman who just said that, Gene Washington, one of the best that ever caught a pass. Anderson hit by Jeff Bryant, number 77. Loss of about a half a yard on the play. 
You know, Jay, one thing that's interesting, you know who the receiving coach is for the Cardinals, one of the best defensive backs to ever play, and that's Emma Thomas. Yes, great start, Kansas City. Oh. Lomax out to Anderson at the 20, 25, up to the 27-yard line. Tackle made by number 57, Sheldon Robinson. Good block by Bostic that side that time. Number 71, the right guard who came out. Clock stop now with 102 remaining in this first half. Seattle took that time out with a minute, two seconds to go. It's third down. Their hope is that they can stop the Cardinals here and get a punt. You know, when they have Paul Johns returning punts, you never know what'll happen. So they still have an opportunity to get on the board if they can stop the Cardinals on this third down try. Anderson now with 67 yards in the first half on 14 carries. You'll remember at the top of the show, we took a look at Warner and Anderson and indicated they would be very important in this game. Well, this is a very safe, conservative play. I, I think the Cardinals don't want to turn the ball over in this situation. You know, Lomax dropped back, he looked downfield, but he, he had no intention of throwing the ball downfield. He doesn't want to come up with interest. And that's what you call a little quick screen out to the halfback. He gets one lineman out in front, throws the ball out to the halfback. It's just like a long handoff. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, NFL 83. We'll bring you up to date on what's happening around the National Football League. There's the rushing stats, Warner and Anderson. And it's third and three from the 28. Number 56 coming up with it, Greg Gaines. And the Cardinals turn it over, and there's still time for Seattle. 53 seconds left, and Seattle with two timeouts remaining. Well, they did what they didn't want to do, and that's turn the ball over. You know, you give it to Otis Anderson. He's the best guy you can give it to, but you never know what's going to happen, particularly when you're playing on a surface like this. It's cold. Took the ball away. Now Seattle, 53 seconds. They have a chance to get on the board, and I'm sure they're going to try to throw one down inside the 20 and go for a field goal. Sheldon Robinson forced the fumble. Gaines picked it up. Play. Coverage by Benny Parrott, number 23 at 48, Lionel Washington. Tried the flea flicker to Paul Johns, the speedster from Tulsa. Well, they tried the flea flicker here. Dan Dorney gets the ball. He throws it back to Craig. But the Cardinals were ready. They were looking for this. You can see they have good coverage. That's number 23, Benny Parrott. Almost comes up with the interception. But they know on first down is when... Seattle might try to do something like a play action. They know that. They weren't fooled at all. Looks like that ball might have been thrown a little farther to the right. He might have been able to come over and get it. Second down. Craig goes down at the 45-yard line. The Cardinals coming in with David Galloway, 65, and Al Bubba Baker, number 60. And the loss back to the 45-yard line. It'll be third down. And now they're out of field goal kicking situation of course they have 35 seconds left to go and Seattle's going to call a timeout with 33 seconds left Seattle now with one timeout remaining and 33 seconds on the board as Craig goes over to talk things over you get a look at the playing surface here at Bush Stadium the home of the St. Louis baseball and the football Cardinals. Gene Washington and Jay Randolph with you as we look at the rush put on by the Cardinals. And that's a typical Floyd Peters rush. He has those four defensive linemen stunning. And stunning means they crisscross, they loop. And Al Baker, he knows when to put the pressure on. Big number 60, he was in there. Line the pressure to Dave Craig. Cardinals have three sacks today. You Seattle mentioned has lost 25 yards. You mentioned Floyd Peters as we see the timeouts remaining. 
try to get a shot of the man they call Sergeant Rock, who coaches the defense. But Sergeant Rock was in San Francisco and came up with the gold rush out there, went to Detroit, the silver rush, he went over there. He's done a great job for every spin with those defensive linemen. Third down and 17 for Seattle. 33 seconds left in the first half. Out of the shotgun. Well, there was movement. I think that's Reggie. I think Reggie got a little over anxious and pulled up. Reggie McKenzie. The Cardinals were showing a blitz, and Reggie may have been the man. 67 offense. Ball start for Reggie McKenzie. Puts the ball back at the 49-yard line of the Seahawks. You know, it may be a good thing that he did that because I don't know if they had time to audible out of that safety blitz. And when you come with a safety blitz like that, the quarterback doesn't have very much time to throw. So I'm sure that they've gone back and, and now they have a play where if that does happen, they'll have something set up for it. Third down and 22. Penalty marker goes down. Craig slipped, tried to regain his footing and throw, but it was Curtis Greer, 75, and E.J. Jr., 54, coming in, and we may get a holding call tacked on here. Yeah. 64 offense holding, decline a penalty. Hesse down. Charged with the holding call. There he is. It's going to be a punting situation. Craig having trouble on this wet surface. Well, only half of the field is still wet, but you can see he goes back there and he tries to plant. He had no traction at all. And when he goes down like that, of course, that puts more pressure on those offensive linemen to try to protect. And you can almost call holding on any play. Man. West, a 36-yard average today on three punts. Steve Bird back to receive. 28 seconds left to go. First half. A high hanger from West. Bird fumbles. Big pile up at the 12. We'll wait till they unravel it. Coming out of the pile, number 56 for Seattle. Craig Gaines. Seattle's football with 15 seconds left. Jim Hannafin's club turns it over. He probably should have called for a fair catch here. Didn't. And it was Gaines who came out of there with a the football. The ball now at the 14-yard line. This is typical of the Cardinals. The turnovers are now two apiece. Well, with 15 seconds to go, they have one shot for the touchdown. Then they'll attempt the field goal if they don't make it. John's to the left. Large to the right. Safety blitz. Craig throwing. And it is to Largent. Largent touchdown. Largent made some kind of move on that far sideline. What an effort. He got it in. He beat Lionel Washington, the rookie, number 48 on the play. Oh, that's a big touchdown for Seattle. This is some exhibition by the wide receiver. Watch Largent. He knows that he has to get the touchdown or they're going to go for the field goal. He gets a little quick out. St. Louis is blitzing, so Washington was on a man-to-man. -man. So Largent knew that if he could get by Washington, he could get to the end zone. He does. Seattle comes up with a touchdown. Eight seconds remaining in the first half. Norm Johnson with the extra point. It is good. And with eight seconds remaining to be played in this first half, a 28 to 21 score on the board. Largent today, six catches, 86 yards, and a touchdown. Next Saturday at 2.30, that's 2.30 Eastern. I want to remind you that college basketball returns to NBC. The Hall of Fame tip-off classic, Springfield, Massachusetts. You'll see the Houston Cougars and Akeem Olajuwon, their big guy. They go against the defending national champions, North Carolina State, a rematch of last year's NCAA championship. And Sports World will follow with a 10-round middleweight bout. Seventh-ranked James the Heat Keenchin and ninth-ranked Murray Sutherland, live from St. Joseph, Missouri. 
And then the Mr. Olympia bodybuilding competition. A big Saturday for you next week on NBC. Mr. Olympia, yours truly was uh, in Munich covering that, uh, that competition. At five, the Houston Cougars and Akeem Olajuwon, their big guy. They go against the defending national champions, North Carolina State, a rematch of last year's NCAA championship. And Sports World will follow with a 10-round middleweight bout. Seventh-ranked James the Heat Keechan and ninth-ranked Murray Sutherland live from St. Joseph, Missouri. And then the Mr. Olympia bodybuilding competition. A big Saturday for you next week on NBC. Mr. Olympia, yours truly was uh, in Munich covering that, uh, that competition. Have fun over there? Oh, it was wonderful. Here's a look at this touchdown and watch the move that Largent makes over there on the sideline. That's 48, Lionel Washington, the rookie. And the mistake he made, which is a rookie mistake, is in that situation, make sure of the tackle. He did. We have just three seconds remaining to be played. There's the time. Mark Duda making the play for the Cardinals as that ball is just shy of the 40-yard line. Third time this season that Largent has had a couple of touchdowns in a game. Boy, he's had a tremendous career over the years. But between he and Roy Green today, you're really seeing how to play the position of wide receiver. They're just going to run it out on it. Well, there we are. A very exciting first half with 49 points going on the board. Jim Hannafin's Cardinals coming away with a 28 to 21 halftime lead. And this crowd and those of you watching around the nation have been treated to some dandy pass catching. Jay Randolph and Gene Washington with you. That is the end of the first half. The score, St. Louis 28. Seattle, 21. Whether you're out in the country or down in the town, there's a new way of living, and it's getting around. Clean of the Rockies, the fresh of the Rockies. Brewed the Coors way, natural and pure. Coors to you, the clean of it. All night through the fresh of it. Rocky Mountain Gold, you got it. The best of the Rockies is yours. For the first time in his life, he's struggling. Having a hard time in math. He needs help. He can get that help with the home computer from Texas Instruments. It has more educational cartridges than any other computer. They challenge, encourage, make learning fun. The home computer from Texas Instruments. It can give your child a head start in school that could last a lifetime. Halftime here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. As the crowd gets set for the halftime show, the Newton, Illinois High School Band will be entertaining. The big story, four touchdown passes. Lomax and Green for St. Louis. Two touchdown passes. Craig to Largent. And a big score for Seattle in the final seconds of the first half. Let's go now to New York, NFL 83. Back to New York, Len Berman for NFL 83. What a shootout in St. Louis. Roy Green, the four touchdowns. The record for a receiver in a game is five. 
uh, Bob Shaw of the Chicago Cardinals and Kellen Winslow. So we'll look for that in the second half. The record in a game, touchdowns, six. Roy Green with four. Let's hit the scoreboard. Lots of action in the AFC East. New England ahead of first place Miami. They've held the Dolphins without a touchdown. 14-6, Sullivan Stadium in Foxborough. First sellout there in two years. Steve Grogan, quarterback sneak, long drive. First time the Patriots had the ball, and New England was up 7-0. But Uwe Von Schaman got Miami on the scoreboard. 52-yard field goal, second quarter, close at the 7-3. But Tony Collins, the short run, takes it across. He's in. Tony Collins having a terrific year. Second leading rusher, AFC East. He may be number one in post-touchdown celebrations. Go get him. Tony Collins, New England ahead of first place Miami, 14-6 at halftime. Elsewhere at halftime, a surprise. The Jets, 14-0 over Buffalo. They're playing at Shea Stadium. You need a stadium for rent. Remember, Jets are going to New Jersey. You need a stadium, go to Shea. Fake field goal try by Buffalo. Matt Kofler throwing for Tony Hunter. Knocked away by John Woodring. That knocked away the try by Buffalo. The Jets, Richard Todd having a poor year. Here's why. The bump. There's the interception by Chris Keating. 17-yard return, but again, Buffalo could not capitalize on that. And here's where Joe Ferguson really got into trouble. Bad throw here. Wide open to the green shirt. That's Johnny Lynn for the Jets. 42 yards. He streaks down the sideline. Jets in surprising fashion staying alive. 14-0 over Buffalo second quarter. Here's a surprising score. 19-0 Green Bay over first place Minnesota at halftime. Kansas City and Cincinnati elsewhere in the state of Missouri. They're at halftime. And the Chiefs are on the war dance. Cincinnati did have a three-game winning streak, but... Bill Kenny for Kansas City rolls out. Nobody's there. Beautiful call by Kenny. And that's the story. The only touchdown, 13 to 6, KC over Cincy. And Chicago's just scored. They lead Philadelphia 14-7 at halftime. Now, Bill McAtee, more scores and highlights. All right, Lenny, you folks watching the game at Bush Memorial Stadium are getting to watch some wide open football. Right now, they are at the half as you you know it is 28 to 21. St. Louis leads the ball game. What a day for Roy Green. Four touchdown passes from Neil Lomax. Chuck Knox was concerned about his defense coming in. They were ranked last in the AFC, but it was the special teams that gave Seattle their first touchdown. Zachary Dixon, number 31, picked up on waivers from Baltimore. He picks up some blockers up the left sideline. 94 yards for a touchdown. First kickoff return for a touchdown ever in Seattle. But then Neil Lomax went to work. Second quarter, 23-yard touchdown pass to Roy Green, who makes a nice corner move here. 14 to 7 St. Louis led it. Then a little bit later in the second quarter, Lomax would throw three touchdown passes in that period to Roy Green. Seven yards, Lomax scrambles. Tenth touchdown pass of the year for Green. And late in the second period, Lomax threw that 66-yarder to Roy Green, but Dave Craig came back to throw the second touchdown pass of the day to Steve Largent. 28-21 St. Louis. That's where they are at the half. Now, Cleveland and Tampa Bay, the Browns 5-5 five and five lead the 1-9 Buccaneers by a score of 10-0 in the third period. Detroit and Houston all tied up down in the Astrodome. Pittsburgh leads Baltimore by a score of 7-3. Walter Abercrombie, an 11-yard touchdown run for the Steelers. Now, Madra Shot, what happens when a receiver and a quarterback get hot like Lomax and Roy Green today, and also Dave Craig and, and uh, Steve Larger? Well, in, in Lomax and Green's case, they score four touchdowns in the first half. <laughs> but it's just one of those days where everything seems to work, and what you have to do is take advantage of that feeling, and that's exactly what St. Louis is doing. And uh, the Lomax has never thrown four touchdown passes in a single game. He's done it in a half. Well, he's threw quite a few in college. I'm sure he's just catching up with his college career. Up in Portland State. Okay, Lenny. All right, thanks, guys. The record for touchdowns in a game now for anybody is another Cardinal, a Chicago Cardinal, Ernie Nevers. So Roy Green at halftime, too short of the all-time record. More after these words from the local station. Tonight, hits in flames. Go off. When he's customized to crack a ring of classic car crooks. Don't touch. Try. Making the most of everything you have to reach your goals. At Dane Bosworth, every resource we have is committed to one goal performance, seeking the investment opportunities to make your hard work pay off. Tired of those high fuel prices? Well, guess what? They're not getting any lower. Fight back with the Attic Blanket from Owens Corning. It's the most powerful roll of thermal protection you can buy. 
Before fuel bills put you in the red, get the attic blanket and put your house in the pink. Owens Corning, building products that put your house in the pink. It's always been important to start the day with a nice, hearty breakfast. But lately, some airlines have put a hole in that theory. Fortunately, on most Alaska Airlines flights, you can look forward to a full, hot meal that will stick to your ribs instead of your fingers. Aaron Brown, King 5 News at 5 and 11. Back in New York, we often hear about drug problems in sports, but we don't often hear about possible solutions. One such program aimed at kids is being run by a noted sports psychologist in conjunction with the National Football League Players Association. This program is called Super Teams. Here's a look. The target, schoolboy athletes. The program started this fall in Johnson City, New York, with 54 high school football players. The message? Drugs and alcohol are not socially acceptable. Why target young athletes? We felt that um, the athletes were the most influential groups and had a great impact upon all youngsters within the school community. And if they could learn to say no and impact the other students, we could change the norms within that school and within the nation as well. The schoolboy athletes involved signed contracts, but unlike pro players, no money's involved. Their contract is a commitment with a pro player like Clark Gaines, the former Jet running back. Super teams developed a contract between the athletes, the school community, and the parents. The contract basically consists of three parts, an academic, social, and athletic. Academically, the kids agreed to a 2.5 grade point average or a C plus. Socially, the kids agreed not to use alcohol or drugs during the playing season. And athletically, it was an agreement both individually and as a team. Now that the program has run full cycle, it's deemed successful. Both the athletes and parents have noticed the changes. But like anything else in life, it has been difficult at times. We took a lot of peer pressure from the kids. They thought a lot about, uh, you know, that we we're going to change so much that we couldn't be, you know, like kids anymore, that they'd, you know, that we we're going to be so much different from other people that we couldn't go out and have a good time without drinking or, you know, smoking. Working with the pro athletes, the super teams, it's got me more involved and I'm able to speak up more and tell people what I really think and, you know, I get involved more. I think I've become more open. Since our son attended this super teams program, we have noticed he's gone from somewhat of a follower to a leader. Right now, his outlook in life has tremendously changed. I find myself not having that much, uh, you know, alcohol or whatever you want to call it. But uh, uh, he's uh, more or less set me straight, too. It, it's done a lot. And just as a mother, seeing my own son at home and listening to him, it's wonderful. Everybody should try it. It's very nice. Joining us now is Clark Gaines, the former Jet running back. Clark also works with us behind the scenes here at NBC. It seems very idealistic. Great athletes dealing with young kids. Does it really work? Yes, Lenny, it really does. I mean, it sounds idealistic, but it works. And the reason it works is because of the professional athletes and the way in which doc Dr. Edwards has incorporated these athletes into his design. You know, it's really a terrific program. How do you feel about uh, pro athletes having some kind of an obligation to kids? Do they, or is their only obligation to do well on the football field? I think we do have an obligation and, and a responsibility to these young people uh, because we are role models, and they see us in that light. And I think that uh, we... Uh, here at Super Teams and the Super Teams program. Uh, we're trying to depict that, uh, that image for those kids. All right, well, thank you. I'm glad we could give it some publicity here today on NBC, and you're to be commended for the work you do, and it should be pointed out to our viewers that nobody makes any money, nobody's paid, and if you'd like some more information on Super Teams, drop us a line here at NBC Sports. A reminder for you now, the primetime boxing coming up on NBC a week from Friday, Larry Holmes and Marvish Frazier that comes up at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, Friday, November 25th. We'll be back with more as our halftime activities continue. And we're back with you in St. Louis, Bush Memorial Stadium. 28 to 21, the Cardinals. Jay Randolph along with Gene Washington. A lot of offense here. 
I love it when the wide receivers are playing the way Green and Largent are playing. There we're going to see. Watch this. Largent, he takes advantage of the rookie. Slips inside. He knows that they're in the blitz. Once he gets past him, he gets into the end zone for six points. Outstanding. Now this fellow, Roy Green, four touchdowns. The concentration on this play is fantastic. Look at this. He concentrates all the way. John Harris loses the football. Roy Green takes it in for his fourth. And we'll be back with more after these messages from your local station. The RCA Select Division Video Monitor is a high-performance television and more. It's designed to get the most from your video components, video cassette recorders, video disc players, and even your stereo. Simply plug in for a better picture and true stereo sound. The RCA Select Division Video Monitor. Quite simply, incredible. See your RCA dealer for special values through December 24th. Ourselves a lion, let's all give a cheer and celebrate with the nice cold beer. Bull! Bull! Beer does not compare to the taste of the bull. Keep your kitty cat in beer. Get the Schmidt's Malt Liquor Bull. It's bold and smooth, you will surely say. It's got more taste than beer any day. So don't say beer, say bull. My lion for a bull. Soon the U.S. Olympic team will be heading to Los Angeles for the Summer Games. They'll fly United, the official airline. This fall, every time you fly United, United donates free mileage to the program. Up to five million miles of free travel. The more times you fly, the more free miles they fly. It's United's five million mile challenge, and the winner is your Olympic team. Yeah! United, official airline of the 1984 Olympic Games. Hero or coward, tyrant or saint, playboy or president. Kennedy begins November 20th. Things are going a lot better these days. I've got high hopes. Our savings are doing a lot better these days. We've got a high rate. See, first put me on their high rate. My market rate savings has paid higher interest than the average money market fund. See First Market Rate Savings has performed impressively month after month. And your money's right here in Washington, insured. We took their high rate. <laughs> market Rate Savings. That's excellence. See First Bank. Expect excellence. Sandy Ng, King 5 News, tonight. There's a warm and wonderful man, Dan Deardorff. Without the helmet right there. All-American from Michigan, many times an All-Pro. He's announced his retirement. He is not playing. He could play, but Randy Clark and Carlos Scott are getting the playing time for the Cardinals at center, where Deardorff had been moved in the final stages of his great career. I'm sure there's some defensive linemen who wouldn't consider him to be warm and wonderful. <laughs> I, I, I think you're right there. <laughs> Dan, though, with a very... Uh, fine career ahead in radio and television in the St. Louis area and along with Jim Hart owns a restaurant here in town. Kick off for Seattle. Norm Johnson will kick it off. Going to the second half the Cardinals are leading at 28 to 21 and here we go. Earl Farrell in the middle at the two. Farrell's at the 15 at the 20 at the 25 at the 27. Coming in to make the play for Seattle. Kerry Justin. And Lomax will start at quarterback. Should mention that Paul Moyer now is playing the strong safety for the Seahawks. Moyer's been in there for most of the game. Easily has played on the specialty units. He's suffering from that uh, toe injury. Though, as you mentioned before, had to practice in a couple of weeks. But did play in last week's game. Otis Anderson, the single setback behind Lomax. And he's got the football. And he gets up to the 32-yard line. Lomax handing it off to Anderson. And Jeff Bryant, 77 on the tackle. The Cardinals have Randy Clark at center. Bostic and Steve are at the guards, and Sharp and Robbins are at the tackles. Number 67 
Luis Sharp, born in Cuba, academic All-American at UCLA. Quite a player. You'll be watching him as we look to Neil Lomax out of Portland State. Anderson now 76 yards on 16 carries. Second down and five. Marsh going in motion. Lomax throws back to the floor. The tight end. And the floor is bumped out of bounds, short of a first down at the 36-yard line. Greg Gaines, number 56, having a fine game. The right outside linebacker made the play with Dave Brown, number 22. It is Green and Bryant at the ends. Robinson and Butler in the middle. Schultz and Gaines outside. Nash, 72, the nose man. Justin and Brown are at the corners. And Moyer and Harris at the safety spots. Third down, one. for the first down. First down, Cardinals. Butler, 53 on the tackle. The Cardinals started today's play, 12th on offense, 7th rushing, 13th passing. One of their problems, interceptions, 18 of them. There's the rushing today for Anderson, winning the battle over the rookie at this point in the proceedings. The Cardinals... <laughs> More points than any team in the NFL coming into today's game. Lomax wheels it out. That's Greg LaFleur again, the tight end. And LaFleur is up to the 44-yard line. You know, LaFleur hasn't caught an awful lot of passes. As a matter of fact, seven coming into today's game. Uh, they don't throw a lot to their tight ends. And I think what, what they're doing is that Seattle likes to play, you know, a lot of coverage where their linebackers will get fairly deep drops. And I think that Lomax is letting those linebackers get back into their drops and he's just dropping the ball underneath to his tight end. In this case, it was Greg LaFleur. The other one is a big, tough guy. He's up and down. That's Doug Marsh. Second down and five from the 44. is stopped and it was Jacob Green and Sheldon Robinson 79 and 57 leading the way. Houston and Detroit are tied 17 all with 9-12 left in the third quarter. Oliver Luck has just thrown a touchdown pass to Dressel in that one. Pittsburgh leads Baltimore 7 to 6. They're early in the second period. Allegre has kicked a field goal for them just moments ago for Baltimore to make it 7-6. coming in motion. Lomax in trouble. Goes down. Lomax may have audible there at the line of scrimmage. There seemed to be a mix-up. Jacob Green played it well along with Jeff Bryant, 77. And Mark Hicks, number 63, the linebacker, is going to come from the outside. Watch, he'll come right in there. There he is, 63. He comes in and he finishes him off along with 79, Jacob Green. And, Jay, I think you are right. Neil did see something he didn't expect, and he tried to audible out, but he wisely held on to the football. He didn't put it up for grabs. Carl Birdsong picked up on waivers from Buffalo by the Cardinals. Third-year man doing an excellent job punting. Boy, this is a boomer. Paul Johns downfield at the 14, at the 20, the 25, out to the 20. Nine yard line. John's with a fine return. John's shaken up. We'll be back. Cardinals lead it 28 21. There is a revolution on the American road, an automotive revolution led by Dodge. The latest evidence Dodge Daytona Turbo Z. Backed by standard 550 protection, turbocharged, fuel injected, front wheel drive. And American The fantastically balanced, performance bred Dodge Daytona Turbo Z. We are Dodge and
24 left in the third quarter. St. Louis leading at 28 21 over in Kansas City. 13 to 9 the Chiefs of John Makovic leading Cincinnati breach has just kicked a 23 yard field goal 10 14 left in the third quarter there Seahawks Craig at quarterback Warner and Hughes in the backfield Johns and Largent the wide receivers young the tight end first down from the 29 Warner stopped for no gain Room 78 again making a fine play and as they unravel it we'll take a look at number 78 Edgy there man, as a lowest rooms. rooms yeah here are the first half statistics Gene well you can see the Seahawks only 43 yards rushed in the first half compared to 108 for the Cardinals passing again the Seahawks trail only 97 yards the Cardinals 167 turnovers they're even up 2-2 time of possession they're fairly close the injured player is Eloy Grooms the nine-year veteran and while he's being attended to we'll take time out the Cardinals lead the Seahawks here comes the all-time favorite on a sesame seed bun he's McDonald's Big Mac he's always been Beef patties, lettuce, pickles going in. Special sauce is a hit. Gotta give him a spin. Mellow cheese melting down. Down, he's at the top of the charts. All over town. Leader of the pack, Big Mac. McDonald's and you. There's only one thing you can really call small about the Dodge Ram 50. The price. We are Dodge. There's so much that's big, like standard payload, 1,630 pounds, larger than any top-selling small pickup. And performance, more horsepower than the base Ford Ranger or Chevy S10. Dodge Ram 50 doesn't look or act like America's lowest-priced truck. We are Dodge. Now get up to $1,000 cash back on 83 models. Sunday, it's an NFL 83 doubleheader. The Raiders look to the playoffs against the Bills from Buffalo. Then the Wild West show continues. The Chiefs take on the Cowboys, plus other regional action on NBC. Grooms pronounces his first name, Eloy, and he is out of the ball game. and here's where it happened. You'll see him number 78. He's a victim of his own players. Watch, he's underneath the pile. You see number 23 come in, that's Benny Perrin. He pushes the crowd back over the top of, of Grooms, and there you can see the trainers on the sideline. They're attending that left knee, and it just got buckled under. Rush Brown, 69, takes over at right tackle. Second and nine for the Seahawks. Craig throwing, and it is complete. Up at the 45-yard line, Paul Johns on a comebacker made the play. Penalty marker down, back downfield, and it could be holding. Referee Ben Dreith indicates holding against Seattle. Well, that'll nullify a very fine play by Paul Johns and put the Seahawks in a hole with 9.47 left in the third quarter. Paul Johns had run a very good pass route. Bing! Offense, 67. Well, let's watch from the ins Oh, there it is. McKenzie again. Oh. And he's holding the fellow who had come in for grooms. That's number 69, Rush Brown. Second down, 19. Dornick now in the backfield, number 33. The give goes to Warner. And Warner is bumped down as he got across the 25-yard line. E.J. Jr., 54, and Lee Nelson, 38, making the play against Warner. The word on Eloy Grooms is a strained left knee, and we have no word yet as to whether he might return to the ballgame. Well, Harold Jackson has just checked into the game for the Seahawks. Replacing Kurt Warner, they'll go into their spread formation probably. Three wide receivers, four wide receivers. There's Harold out of Jackson State. Third and 13. Craig goes down, and 
it was David Galloway, number 65. Galloway, who played at Florida, who was a defensive end in college, number two draft pick, the fifth sack for the Cardinals. And there you can see he was going over and giving number 75, Curtis Greer, a hug because when those guys get sacks, it's usually a result of coordination. And Floyd Peters loves to run those stunts where he has his defensive lineman. You know, one guy will loop outside and the other guy will come inside. And they keep changing it around. It makes it difficult for the offensive line to block. Jeff West punting for Seattle. Another high hanger. Fair catch called for. And gathered in at the 42-yard line. And the fans applaud because, of course, the Cardinals turned one of those over earlier. That was Willard Harrell back there taking the punt. Eight minutes, 19 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. Here in St. Louis, the Cardinals lead it 28-21. Introducing new Gillette Foamy Gel. The gel that gives you more than any other gel. More lubricants. Better beard setup. More lubricants. Smooth takeoff. More lubricants. For the closeness and comfort you want in a shave, get new Gillette Foamy Gel. The gel that gives you more. Working hard when the pressure's on could mean perspiration order. Right guard, right guard antiperspirant helps stop wetness better than the leading spray as it kills the bacteria that can cause perspiration odor. First and 10 from the 42-yard line for the Cardinals. Otis Anderson, 80 yards on 18 carries. Lomax is 12 out of 15, 176 yards, four touchdowns, all of them to Roy Green. Out to Tilly. Tilly at the 45. The little guy gets to the 46-yard line. He's bumped hard there. Leading the way was Gaines, 56. Good tackle by Dave Brown. He had a lineman coming out in front, uh, Terry Steve, but he faked him out and came up and made the tackle. Jets 14 to 7 over Buffalo, and there's Green Bay leading Minnesota 19 to 7. Ricky Young has just scored with 12 Second 20 left in the third period. 46. Second down and six from the 46 yard line. Lomax to Anderson. Anderson got to the 47, a pick of about one. Coming in was number 53, Keith Butler, to make the play. Also, Joe Nash. Nash playing that nose position ahead of Manu Tuiasosopo and doing quite a job. Nash, a free agent find out of Boston College, number 72. Our congratulations, incidentally, to the Huskies. They shut out USC yesterday. And you're an old Stanford grad. You always like to see USC get beat, don't you? All the time. <laughs> Washington now with the inside track to play Illinois in the Rose Bowl. Lomax on the run, and down he goes. Back at the 35-yard line, leading the way, Don Dufek, the extra defensive back. Second sack for the Seahawks. Dufek out of Michigan, an All-American. Dufek has done such a fantastic job on special teams. Gets a chance to come in on a safety blitz. Comes up with a sack. Birdsong will punt. And Johns is back to receive. Easley is in the game now as a short man. Three punts, a 43-yard average today for Birdsong. Johns is going to let it go inside the 20, inside the 15. And a penalty marker goes down as the ball is down at the 13-yard line. And there is some shoving and some battling there. You can see Parla Vecchio, who is out of Penn State, a first-year man picked up on waivers from Green Bay, and he was into it a little bit. And we'll wait and see the penalty marker down. Parla Vecchio talking to his head coach, Jim Hannafin. 
Ben Dreith discussing the infractions with his officials. Largent right there listening along with number 75, Curtis Greer for the Cardinals. Greer is going to have the option apparently. 619 left to play, third quarter. It was a 52 yard punt. Cardinals leading at 28 to 21 at 49 points scored in the first half and nobody's been able to put a point on the board here in the third quarter. That's Dave Craig. Coach Chuck Knox. Knox led the Bills to the AFC's title in 80. Five years at Buffalo. Jim Hannafin. Played for Toronto in the CFL. And the discussion continues. Ben Dreith is still trying to sort matters out. <laughs> Well, and Knox is saying, come on, <laughs> let's play football out there. <laughs> Knox is rather amused by the whole thing. Here's what caused it. There was, Carlo Vecchio really got hot at somebody, and uh, of course we don't know what that somebody did to make him that hot. Kicking team had a man downfield. The receiving team had a block in the back. We're going to play it over. Well, scratch the punt, and Jim Hannafin <laughs> says, what? There's Dan Deardorff, the veteran. Chuck Knox. Chuck was a great star at Little Juniata, Pennsylvania College. 101 wins, 62 losses, and a tie coming in in his professional coaching career to today's action. The ball is going to go back to the 36-yard line, and Birdsong will punt it again. Carlo Vecchio just came off the field. They took him out of the punt unit, and he really upset. John's downfield, and this is a boomer. John's at the 19. Made a good move. Penalty marker goes down. We got it back to the 22. I think we're going to have a clip. They're going to call it on Gregory Johnson. Number 27. Gregory's upset because I think he feels that just when he made the block, the fellow he was blocking on turned his back. There's the indication. Downfield for the Cardinals on the play was Leonard Smith, number 45, a 45 yard punt. Well, maybe we can see it. Oh, Go right yeah, there. there. There's the end of it. Actually, I think what happened is that Gregory Johnson didn't necessarily block him. He just put he his hand out. In the back, receiving team number 27. The call goes against the Seahawks. Gregory Johnson and the Seahawks down 28-21. Start from their nine-yard line. Wide receiver set to the near side of the field. Craig may have called an audible here. He gives it to Warner. Warner busts it up over the 15 to the 19 yard line. Stop made by Lee Nelson, number 38. Kansas City now leading Cincinnati 20 to nine. Kenny has hit Scott on a 21 yard touchdown pass. They're in the third quarter with four minutes left. Philadelphia and Chicago, 14 all. Jaworski to Woodruff for a five yard touchdown pass. Six and a half to play in the third. Houston leads Detroit 24 to 17 and they are early in the third quarter. Houston may be going to win their first game. Here's the measurement. And it is a first down for the Seattle Seahawks. 550 left to play in the third quarter. Cardinals lead at 28 to 21. <laughs> Seattle six and four coming into today's game. The Cardinals three six and one. Warner 59 yards 15 carries Seattle from their own 19 yard line. Kurt Warner the single setback wide receiver set to the left Warner cuts it back in the middle and Warner gets to the 25. Let's go to New York now NFL 83 and an update. 
Thank you, Jay Randolph. You mentioned this touchdown pass a moment ago. Thought you'd like to take a look at it. Bill Kenny, a quarterback for the Chiefs. There he goes into the shadows to Willie Scott. He's got it. 20 to 9, Chiefs, third quarter. Back to you, Jay. Thank you, Len Berman. You and the crew doing a great job updating us on the action all afternoon. John Makovic's offensive line doing a good job protecting Kenny over there at Kansas City. And he's been more effective, of course. Here's Warner. Oh, he almost broke it. Almost got it out of there for a big gainer, but Dave Aarons, number 58, made the stop along with Rush Brown, 69. Well, Kurt knew the linebackers. You can see number 51. That's middle linebacker Kurt Oliver. He's coming in on a linebacker blitz. Warner knew that, and he knew if he'd broken through there, he had clear sailing. There was only going to be one defensive back that he had to beat for the touchdown. Warner now is 75 yards on 17 carries. First down at the 34. Warner again, out to the 37-yard line. He's wrapped up by number 65, Galloway, number 54, E.J. Jr. The Cardinals, offensively seventh in rushing in the NFC, averaging 4.4 4 4 per carry, 13th in passing. A cold day here. It's Neil O'Donohue, born in Dublin, Ireland. Used to kick for Tampa Bay. Does the kicking now for the Cardinals. Second down and six. Warner the single setback. Warner again. Gets to the 40. Just over the 40. David Galloway 65 and Kurt Allerman number 51 making the play. Clock running now with three minutes and 25 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It's been scoreless. Both clubs got seven in the first period. The Cardinals with 21 in the second, 14 for Seattle in the second. They scored on a pass to Largent in the final 10 seconds. 28-21 at halftime, and we've had a scoreless third quarter to this point. Third down and four. Craig under pressure, throws, and it is complete for a first down. That's Charlie Young. Young, the tight end, took it was stopped immediately by Charlie Baker, number 52. Young, of course, a free agent, played for San Francisco. He also played for Philadelphia, also played for the Rams. He's been around. He's been around, but I'll tell you, they're fortunate to have him in Seattle. He's a, he's a great leader. 21 receptions, 283 yards, one touchdown. But I'll tell you, what, when, they, when he speaks, the young guys listen because they know, here's a guy you know, he's done it on the field. He works hard, studies late, always has film. Chuck Knox is just really fortunate and feels great about having him on his team. There's an update on the first down control. Out to Warner. Warner got one block, but it didn't do any good because Charlie Baker played it perfectly over there. Baker, number 52, played on the right side last year. He's... The left linebacker today, number 52, number three draft choice in his fourth year out of New Mexico. He uh, avoided that block by Edwin Bailey, number 65. And I think Bailey felt he had him in his sights, but Baker gave him a leg, took it away, made the tackle. Bailey playing for Reggie McKenzie, number five draft choice in 81 from South Carolina State. Started all nine games last year. He's spelling McKenzie at the moment. Second down, nine. Craig going for Largent, and he couldn't hold it. Largent trying to come back and spin around to take it, and is very wet in that area around the 35-yard line. Lionel Washington had the coverage with the middle linebacker, 51, Kurt Allerman. If that had been a dry surface, Largent would have had this reception. This half of the field continues to be wet. You see, you see the defender, he falls down. Largent knows it is slippery, so he kind of slides around trying to maintain his footing, but he just couldn't get enough traction to get back to catch that one. Craig is 10 out of 18, 138 yards, two touchdowns. Zornick is now in the backfield. Blitz, safety blitz. Zornick picks it up. Here is the pass over the head of Largent. 
Margent covered on the play by Cedric Mack, number 47. Also, Leonard Smith was back there as the Cardinals were in there. Prevent defense, and the Seahawks will have to punt with a minute and 10 seconds left in the third quarter. They disguised, St. Louis disguised that safety blitz well, right until the last minute. Didn't allow Dave Craig time to audible. So he just put the ball up. He waited as long as he could. He put the ball up, hoping that Larson could get underneath. West, five punts, 37-yard average, but the excellent hang time. Willard Harrell lets it go, and it's into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20 on the touchback as we are inside a minute left to play in this third quarter. It has been a scoreless third quarter up to now. 52-yard punt, 28-21 Cardinals. Televideo personal computers equip the professional for success because Televideo's innovative design produces powerful, sensibly priced computers that communicate with one another and grow as rapidly as you do. Televideo, personal computers that equip you to attain that most coveted objective of business boom. Televideo, personal computers. Get in on the boom. Who makes the best-built American cars? Based on National Highway Traffic Safety recall data over the last two years, Chrysler does, because Chrysler had the lowest percent of recalls. And only Chrysler has the confidence to back the cars it builds for five years or 50,000 miles, with protection on the engine, powertrain, and against outer body rust through. Based on recalls alone, Chrysler makes the best built American cars. And with 550 protection, they're not only the best built, they're the best backed. At Shea, at Shea Stadium, it's all tied up now. Buffalo and the Jets. Here's how. Third and goal for the 19. Joe Ferguson fires. He has Byron Franklin in the end zone. It's tied 14 apiece. Back to St. Louis now. Back in St. Louis, Jay Randolph and Gene Washington with you. The Cardinals operate from their own 20-yard line. You can see that shady part of the field. That's where it's wet. Lomax out to Anderson. Two blockers in front of him. He's at the 25, gets to the 26. Bruce Schultz, the outside linebacker, number 58, did a nice job on the play. Bruce Schultz has started every game since he joined the Seahawks as a rookie out of the University of Texas. 57 tackles coming into today's game. His hometown, I read the other day, is now the fastest growing city in the country, Austin, Texas. A little bit of information well, for you. How you I like that? Would never have known that, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> second down and six from the, or make it second down and four from the 26. Pitch back to Anderson. He's in trouble. No gain on the play. Joe Nash, the nose man, in there, along with Shelton Robinson. And Mr. Green, Jacob Green. Oh, Jacob is having Forcing a tremendous year. Up. He really is. The gun sounds. And we come to the end of the third quarter. The score, the Cardinals 28, Seattle 21. We'll be right back after this from your local station. Tonight, hits in flames. Go off. When he's customized to crack a ring of classic car crooks. No time to lose. Night Rider. Men to overcrowded airlines want to make you scream? Fear of flying. It's down. Don't delay. Make your reservations for airplanes tonight. There is a special feeling in Oldsmobile. What makes the new Olds Forenza a whole lot of fun to drive? A whole lot of things. Forenza offers front-wheel drive, an available five-speed and overhead cam engine, and handling as sporty as its name. But what makes this fun-to-drive car special is that it's an Oldsmobile. So it's not only fun to drive, it's fun to arrive. It is a special
Gene Anderson, King 5 News at 5 weeknights. No score in the third quarter. Defense has prevailed. There is Floyd Peters, the man they call Sergeant Rock, coaches the defense for the Cardinals. Sounds pretty good. I was a defensive coach with the 49ers when I was playing there for several years and, and has done a fantastic job every place he's been. Third down and three from the 27 yard line. Oh, Max is audibly. Hand off to Anderson. Anderson doesn't get the first down. Look for a moment like he might. Nash made a fine play, swarming over there to bring him down. As you mentioned, out of the shotgun, Lomax Audible decided to give it off to Anderson. They don't get the first down, and the Cardinals have to punt here in the opening moments of the fourth quarter. Seattle is going to get this ball in fairly good field position. Paul Johns is back there. Of course, what they would love to do is to be able to get this ball and get off that wet half of the field. Johns is on the wet portion, down at the 30. Carl Birdsong to do the punt. Rush, he gets it away. Fair catch at the 30. So the Seahawks are going to have it in pretty good shape. When we come back, it was a 41-yard punt. The Cardinals lead it 28-21. You're all set, sir. Good time. You're watching a ticket agent's class at the American Airlines Learning Center. Here we taught Debbie Bridges the fastest way to get you through the airport with our one-stop check-in. Now she can give you boarding passes for all your flights at once. Yeah, let me. But some things we didn't have to teach her. Now smile. We're American Airlines, doing what we do best. The fresh of the Rockies, brewed the Coors way, natural and pure. Coors to you, the clean of it, all night through the fresh of it. Rocky Mountain Gold, you got it. The best of the Rockies is yours. Monday, will Boone's family be disgraced when a prank backfires and could ruin his future? I'm afraid I'll have to suspend the boys. But that means Boone won't graduate. Monday. Jay Randolph and Gene Washington with you, a scoreless third quarter. I did the Cardinal preseason games. You did the Seattle preseason games. It's kind of fun for us today. Well, they didn't have any defense at all in the first half, but I think they went in the locker room and said, uh, gentlemen, defense is 50% of this game. First and 10 from the 31-yard line. Craig going to put it up. Has time. Throws. Margin. Margin all the way down to the 45-yard line and a first down. Wayne Smith, number 44, on the tackle. Largent getting a big reception as the Seahawks try to get back in this one. But look at this throw. That's a beauty. Dave Craig just drills it in there. And that's what a receiver wants when he's downfield about 15 or 20 yards. You don't want that ball in the air a long time to give the defensive back time to recover. So you want a nice, crisp throw. You can see as soon as he broke, turned to the middle, the ball was there on time. Largent, seven for 110, two touchdowns. First and 10 from the 45-yard line. Young coming in motion. Craig over the middle, going long. Largent, touchdown Seattle! Two big plays for Craig and Largent, and the Seahawks are within a point of tying this one up. He beat the rookie, Lionel Washington, again. Boy, I tell you, Largent and Roy Green are putting on some show here today. Largent with three touchdown passes caught. Green has caught four for St. Louis. Here it is again. Well, Largent had not beat so much. Lionel Washington, you know, he tried to make a lunge to, kept, to catch up, and he just fell down. Washington ran right by him, and Dave Craig delivered a beauty. Johnson can tie it up. And he does. 
We have 13.09 to play. The Seattle Seahawks have battled back, and they tie it up here 28 all. a revolution on the American road led by Dodge and it's changing the way America drives with a five-year 50,000 mile protection plan the most front-wheel drive models in America the most turbocharged models and revolution. a turbocharged revolution called Daytona a transportation revolution called caravan we are Exercise. Start. Right. Start slowly at first, but start. Exercise. Exercise. You know you've got to find your way. That new tomorrow starts today. This is the best of life. You can have it. I've uh, decided to start. You can do it, and we'd like to help. Visa. Steve Largent there with Jim Zorn, but it's been Craig throwing to Largent today. Three touchdowns, nine on the year for Largent. Johnson will kick off in the middle. Earl Farrell set to receive it. The Largent is giving the rookie cornerback, Lionel Washington, some lesson today. Farrell at the seven, at the 15, the 20. It opened up in the middle, and he was able to get to the 26-yard line. For the Seahawks, Eric Lane, number 37, made the tackle. Today's game is brought to you by Dodge Cars and Ram Tough Dodge Trucks. Dodge, an American revolution. By Alcoa Aluminum Company of America, world leader in aluminum technology. And by Anheuser-Busch St. Louis, the Brewers of Michelob. Some things speak for themselves. Gene Washington, Jay Randolph, here in St. Louis. From the 26, the Cardinals with Lomax. He's going to go upstairs, long on first down for Green. Couldn't get there. Didn't look like he had a prayer to make that catch, yet he almost got there. Excellent coverage by number 26. Kerry Justin. Kerry Justin. You know, Roy Green has, has the ability when you're a wide receiver and you're going long, the first thing you try to do is you want to try to catch up with the defensive back. Once you do that, you have to save just a little bit, a little bit of acceleration, so when that ball is thrown, if it's thrown a little far, you need a little bit to go get it. And that's what Roy Green did. He kicked it into fourth gear, went past the defensive back, but he just couldn't get quite to that one because it's thrown a little bit too far to the inside. But he's a great athlete, tremendous athlete with a lot of speed. Second down and 10 from the 26. That's Marsh going in motion. Lomax looking and throwing complete. That's Roy Green for a first down at the 40-yard line. Terry Justin on the tackle. Green with four touchdown catches today, really putting on a show. He's from little Henderson State down in Kentucky. Came to the Cardinals as a defensive back. And he can fly. Well, the thing that impresses me so much there is a comparison of the stats. Large at eight receptions, 155 yards, three TDs. Green, five, four touchdowns, 123 yards. But what impresses me most about Green is the way he runs his pass routes. He's smooth and precise. And Lomax trying to get it to Tilly. Tilly was not looking, and that was almost picked off by Dave Brown, the cornerback over there, number 22. Tilly missed the audible. That was that was an audible situation. You can see Tilly's going down the block. He's running a play that was called in the huddle, but Lomax came up to the line of scrimmage and he changed the play. Tilly didn't pick it up. Tilly was very surprised to see Brown going for that football. Over there. Second and ten from the 41. We have 12-11 left to play. Score tied 28 all. There's Tilly. Marsh comes to the wing right. And Tilly in motion to the far sideline. Out to Anderson at the 45. First down, down to the 
number 57 on the tackle along with Greg Gaines 56 you love to get the football out to the outside to Otis Anderson and give him some room to run he gets some good blocks but he does it mainly on his own Randy and you Clark. have to swarm tackle you're gonna bring down Otis Anderson you have to swarm tackle one guy very rarely will bring him down because he's got such strength in his legs and with 64 Clark had led the way Blocking for him out there. First down at the 47. Blitz! Down he goes. Bruce Scholes, number 58, came in to make the play. A big sack there. Takes them all the way back to the 43-yard line. That's the third sack today for Seattle. Well, there's number 58 in the middle of your screen, the outside linebacker, Bruce Schultz. Coming in virtually untouched for the sack. Jacob and Green was right there with him. Well, Lomax was looking for Roy Green. He had Roy going down the middle on that post again. But as soon as he got back there to set up, he had Bruce Schultz right in his face. Second down and 19. Wide receiver set to the far sideline. Lomax stepping up and throwing. And a great catch by Tilly. Tilly made a fine catch, and what a throw Lomax made under fierce pressure. Dave Brown on the coverage. It looked like he got the first down. Very close to it over there at around the 36-yard line. Well, Neil Lomax operates the best on the move. You know, he's always he's a little rollout quarterback in Portland. When he drops back, his feet are so nervous that he tends to, you know, it tightens him up a little bit. When he starts moving, that's when he's at his best. As you said, Pat Tilly came up with a terrific reception. And what a display the receivers are putting on in this football game. It's been quite a show. It was a first down. Here's Anderson at the 30. Penalty marker goes down as Anderson got it to the 28-yard line. Keith Butler, number 53, wrapped up Anderson. You heard the voice of Ben Dreis say, do we have a face mask? And he's talking things over there with Dale Williams, his headlinesman. Face mask the call against Seattle. And Chuck Knox, who's seen his team come back to tie it. Now a worried man. Well, when you're trying to tackle Lotus Anderson, I guess you grab for anything you can get a hold of. Face mask. He just banged in there. That's a first down. Penalty call against Bruce Schultz, number 58. First down at the 23-yard line. Ten and a half minutes to play in this game. 28 all. Seattle has better double cover Roy Green. Randy Love is in the game. That's Love. Love gets it inside the 20-yard line. Randy Love out of Houston has played basically on the specialty teams. He has 96 yards and a 3.6 rushing average coming into today's game. Green 79 and Schultz 58 on the tackle. Ten minutes to play. Cardinals in Seattle tied at 28. Tilly and Green come to the right side. Love is the single setback. Yard line. First down. John Harris, 44, made the stop as Green got the job done. How would you be num like to be number 26, Kerry Justin? Look at this. He's coming up. Now he's got two blockers going to come. Oh, two big linemen. Out, didn't they? They really wiped him out. Two linemen coming out about 260 each, and there's 26. Look, he just disappeared from his screen. Nine minutes to play. First and ten for the Cardinals at the 12. Randy Love. Nothing there as Love 
could not get outside of Greg Gaines. Gaines has played a fine game today. Number 21 also there, Paul Moyer. And Jeff Bryant, number 77. He strung that play out. That's a good job. Jay, I wonder if, if uh, Otis Anderson is injured. Uh, he's you have come to back wonder. in. Uh, he's just come back in now, I believe. Apparently he had a problem, but is back in there as Love took over for him. It's just Otis Anderson, the single setback. LaFleur, the other tight end, is in there now. That's him, 89 in motion. Oh, double motion. Double motion. Penalty markers all over the place. They give it to LaFleur, and he's down to the three, but they're going to bring this one back. You can't do that. <laughs> Only in Canada. <laughs> Only in Canada, right. <laughs> or on the sandlot somewhere, maybe. Well, you can... There's one now. And here comes oh. up. <laughs> well, this will cost them. Chuck Knox looking out at the scene. Five consecutive NFC Two crowns in, in Los at Angeles. Same time. Five yard penalty. You heard Ben Dreith indicate it. I mentioned that Knox won five consecutive NFC crowns with the Rams, and he got fired. No, it was too too dull. <laughs> too dull, huh? They want they want to win exciting in Los Angeles, right? They just didn't want to win. Exciting. Now we've got a good one going here. 28 all. Eight minutes left to play. Second and 14. Oh, there we go. There we go again. Time out. Time out says. Lomax, he says, we got to get this figured out. And the fans here are a little disturbed. Deerdorf talking with his coach there and saying, we have definitely got a problem. Well, timeout, St. Louis, first timeout. Yeah. Well, with the timeout, the Cardinals will try to get things squared away. We'll take time for this message. There's only one thing you can really call small about the Dodge Ram 50. The price. We are Dodge. There's so much that's big, like standard payload, 1,630 pounds, larger than any top-selling small pickup. And performance, more horsepower than the base Ford Ranger or Chevy S10. Dodge Ram 50 doesn't look or act like America's lowest price truck. We are Dodge. Now get up to $1,000 cash back on 83 models. Next Sunday, we invite you to join Len Berman. NFL 83 will start the day off. A doubleheader on NBC. Many of you will see the Raiders at Buffalo. Other games include Baltimore at Miami, Cleveland, New England, San Diego here at St. Louis, Houston at Cincinnati. And then the second half of the doubleheader, the Chiefs will be at Dallas, Seattle at Denver. Check your local listings. Love and Anderson are both in there. Out of the shotgun. The pass comes to Anderson. He's at the 16-yard line and written out of bounds by John Harris, the free safety. Number 79, Jacob Green over there also. Clock stop with eight minutes remaining in regulation time, 28 all. What Seattle is trying to do with their defense in this situation is prevent the touchdown. We have about eight minutes to go in the game. They want to keep St. Louis from getting the six points. You know, they're in field goal range. St. Louis gets three, then they get the ball back, march downfield, can go ahead on the touchdown themselves. That's what they're trying to do is prevent six right here. Third down and 14. Lomax throwing and almost intercepted. John Harris almost picked it off as they were trying to go to Mike Schumann, an extra wide receiver, number 84, out of Florida State. And now, Neil O'Donohue will come on to attempt the field goal. It's on the wet portion of the field as we look again at this toss from Lomax. He tried to get the ball to Schumann, but you can see number 44 
And John Harris, he was in good position, poorly thrown ball. That's one of the few passes that Neal has not thrown well today. Thrown behind the receiver. Neal O'Donohue, 10 out of 19. Benny Perrin holding, 33-yarder on the way, and it is good. 33-yard field goal for Neal O'Donohue, and the Cardinals regain the lead. We'll be back with more right after this. You know, at Midas, we've installed over 48 million mufflers, more than any other muffler chain. In fact, compare us to any of them, and you know what you'll find? We've had more repeat customers than they've had customers. We've done more foreign cars than they've done cars. And with our Midas guarantee, we've installed more free mufflers than they've sold. When it comes to experience, no one can touch Midas. Trust the Midas touch. Now Washington's better. Way better. Nashville's better. Far better. Los Angeles is better. Really better. Now Holiday Inn is a better place to be. Almost every seven days, a brand new Holiday Inn hotel opens in the locations you want the most. Better hotels in the best locations. That's why we're number one. We're number one, the worldwide host. First with what you want the most. 800 Holiday. Holiday Inn is a better place to be. Arno Palmer, Gary Player, Jack Nicklaus, and Tom Watson charge after a $360,000 purse. Golf's greatest foursome plays, the Skins Game. Thanksgiving weekend on NBC Sports. 33,280 watching here at Bush Stadium with you as O'Donoghue kicks off. Zachary Dixon. Dixon, who broke one earlier for a touchdown, brings it out. George Schmidt and Randy Love on the tackle. And Seattle will put it in play from their own 26-yard line. Dixon went 94 yards with a kickoff in the first quarter. Craig coming back on. He's 12 of 21, 207 yards, three touchdowns and an interception. Largent has caught eight for 155 yards. Warner has 80 yards rushing. Craig throwing and it is complete. At the 35-yard line to Paul Johns, Wayne Smith, 44 on the coverage. New England leading Miami, 17 to 6. As we take a look at this again, there's Paul Johns, number 85. He just runs about a 12-yard square out. Of course, the defensive back, that's number 44, Wayne Smith. When he has man-to-man -man coverage, particularly when your team is leading, he has to give you room. He can't let you get on top. So that opened up that little pass out to the flat. In that New England game, Steinford has just kicked a 21-yard field goal with a minute and a half left in the third quarter. Warner and Hughes in the backfield. The handoff going to Warner. Warner bumped out of bounds hard on the far sideline by number 48, Lionel Washington. Looked like he got the first down. The Jets lead Buffalo 17 to 14. Leahy has just kicked a 48-yard field goal. A minute left in the third quarter. Green Bay 22 to 21 over Minnesota. Kansas City continues to defeat Cincinnati. Chicago over Philadelphia now in the fourth quarter. Cleveland 20 to nothing, shutting out Tampa Bay in the fourth quarter. And Houston 27 to 17 over Detroit. Pittsburgh leading Baltimore 17 to 6. Here it is 31 28 Cardinals. Craig going downfield and it is incomplete. Paul Johns had a shot at making the catch. Lionel Washington was right there with him. Paul had his hands on it. It was a great throw from Dave Craig. He gets inside outside this is a beautiful throw Ooh, right in the Probably hand should have made that catch he's been a real spark since coming back from the knee injury he was injured in preseason you know when he came back he, he broke a punt return for 75 yards and that goes a long way for building your confidence coming into today's game he leads the AFC in punt returns a 13.3 yard average Dornick is in the game now along with Warner 
out of the shotgun. They give it to Warner. Warner cuts it back in the middle and didn't get much as Curtis Greer, big number 75, number one draft choice in 80 out of Michigan, made the play. Clock running as we come to seven minutes remaining in regulation time. The Seahawks have three timeouts left. The Cardinals, two. It was 28-21 Cardinals at halftime. We had a scoreless third quarter. Seattle has a touchdown. The Cardinals have a field goal here in the fourth period. Warner's out of the game. Carol Jackson is in there. Byron Walker in. Four wide receivers, third and nine. Cardinals showing a blitz. Craig throwing, and the catch made by Dornick. And they call it incomplete as he was banged hard by Cedric Mack, the extra defensive back for the Cardinals, number 47. Oh, it's punting time coming for Seattle. Well, the Cardinals weren't giving up anything deep for Seattle to throw underneath the coverage. And look at this hit. Oh, that's picture perfect. That's number 47, Cedric Mack. When you're catching a football like that and you have to jump up high, someone hits you. Unless you have your hands wrapped around that ball tightly, it's almost impossible to hold on to it. Jeff West, seven punts today, 39-yard average. Willard Harrell downfield, set to receive the punt. Six and a half minutes to play. Harrell at the 25, at the 30. Gets it up to the 34-yard line. Penalty markers are down. Keith Butler, 53, was there to make the tackle. And there is a marker down and Ben Dright discussing things. Probably it's against Seattle. The outside men or not necessarily the outside, but someone got downfield before the, the uh, ball was punted. So they have an illegal man downfield, and St. Louis, since they have the ball in good position, will probably decline Illegal man downfield, number 37 on a kicking team, decline the penalty. First down the other way. Oh, the Cardinals have it. Jim Hannafin's Big Red leading the Seahawks 31-28 to 28 here at Bush Stadium in St. Louis. We'll be back right after these messages. There is a revolution on the American road, an automotive revolution led by Dodge. The latest evidence, Dodge Daytona Turbo Z. Backed by standard 550 protection, turbocharged, fuel injected, front wheel drive. The fantastically balanced, performance bred Dodge Daytona Turbo Z. With all these points, the record's mine, that's clear. Let's buy a man a nice cold beer. Bull! Bull! You get a big bull new when the bull is here. The sled's not like a bull. We'll give you more things than beer. So don't say beer, just say bull. Len Berman in New York and elsewhere in Missouri, things are really heating up. Ken Anderson, a quarterback for the Bengals. They're trailing in the game. He finds Chris Collinsworth. The point was blocked, but since he's within five, back to St. Louis. All right, thank you, Len. And, uh, of course, Anderson coming back after the neck injury. Looked very, very sharp. That 55 to 14 victory last week over Houston. Lomax has been sharp, 19 out of 25, 241 yards, four touchdowns, all to Roy Green. First down from the 33. Cardinals with Otis Anderson running the football, trying to run the clock here. Six minutes, 10 seconds remaining in regulation time. Anderson now has carried the ball 23 times for a total of 98 yards. Well, you saw the clock just ticking away. We're down to five minutes, 55 seconds now. I think, you know, a lot of times, though, you have a tendency to get very conservative in this situation. There you see a score. That's the final Cleveland over Tampa, 20 to nothing. But you can get conservative and go away from the things that got you where you are. Otis Anderson, Otis Anderson has limped off. Randy Love, number 40, is in there. And that's Love getting about a yard. 
Love, as we told you, basically a special teams player, but getting an opportunity to run today because of an injury to the talented little running back, Stump Mitchell. There's Anderson. He's off. That's John Omahundro, the Cardinal trainer, the balding gentleman to his left. Joe Nash on the tackle. And now coming into the game. Sopo came in, and the handoff went to Wayne Morris. Jets and Buffalo are now tied up 17 all as Danello has just kicked a 30-yard field goal. They have eight and a half left in the fourth quarter. Time for the Cardinals to do some punting now. These two clubs put a lot of points on the board in the first half, but it's been tough sledding offensively in the second half. Birdsong, five punts, 43-yard average. Paul Johns, downfield, set to receive. A fake, and coming up is Green. He's got the first down. Roy Green has done it all today, and they love it here. First down, Cardinal. Just when I was thinking that St. Louis had been too conservative, run the ball, then going to put it away, what do they do? They snap the ball to the up back. Roy Green picks up enough for the first down. They maintain possession of the ball. Three, three minutes and 40 seconds ago. Now the pressure is really on Seattle to get that football back because they need a field goal just to tie. Cardinals from their own 48. After the fake and successful first down play. Lomax out to Anderson. Gets away from one man and gets it to the 50-yard line. Well, Anderson did a good job making a few yards out of that. Jacob Green on the tackle. Shelton Robinson was out there. He had a shot at him, but Otis made a miss. Clock is running with two minutes, 55 seconds remaining. Anderson, seven catches today, 47 yards. He is caught now on the year 33. Seattle has three timeouts left. The Cardinals with two. Clock running. Penalty markers go down. Tootie Robbins, number 63, the right tackle for the Cardinals, made a move, and it'll cost them five. There's Ball Tootie. start, offense 63. Tell you how good a prospect this guy is. He's 6'4", 278 out of East Carolina. They have a fine football team. And they say this fella at 278 can run the 40 in 4'8". How about that? That's putting them, that's as putting fast them down as, pretty good. As fast as a lot of defense fast. That's right. Second down, 13 from the 45. Marsh in motion. Lomax to Marsh. Marsh to the 45-yard line, short of a first down. He got inside the 45. The tackle made by Dave Brown, number 22. Marsh, the number two draft pick, out of Michigan. He's been injured much of his career, and that's hampered him. They had high hopes that he would do a job for them at tight end, but those hopes have not come to fruition the way they had liked. You Lomax. see Lomax coming off as we're going to get the two-minute warning right now. Two minutes left to play in regulation time. And 31-28, the Cardinals lead Seattle. Now, here comes another one of those fantastic finishes. Alcoa presents fantastic finishes. 1980, Bart Starr's Packers have a chance to beat the Bears in overtime. Chester Markle's kick is up and blocked. The ball bounces back into Markle's hands. 
Nothing for Chester to do now but tuck it in and run. He picks up a needed block along the way and cruises 25 yards into the end zone. The Packers win 12-6 on their own block field goal on the game's final play. For the past six summers, Americans have had a special reason for picking up aluminum cans. For every pound of cans collected during certain promotional periods, Alcoa has sent a penny to the U.S. Olympic team. Over two and a half billion cans have been recycled and almost $900,000 donated to the U.S. Olympic Committee. Recyclers of America, Alcoa salutes your gold medal performance. We can't wait. Otis Anderson comes back onto the field for the Cardinals. Anderson had gone out, limped off, but he's in there now, and it's third down and three. You would expect it to be hard to keep the ball on the ground, and you would also expect that they would give the ball to Anderson. They certainly don't want to turn it over. Big play, third down three at the 45 of Seattle. Number 32. Well, if I had number 32 in my backfield and I was in the same situation, I'd give the ball to him. I think what happened is that he confused Seattle with the set. He wasn't directly behind the quarterback. He was off in a situation, moved to the side, and it looked as though they were going to pass the ball. They gave it to him on a little trap. Had a nice hole and picked up a big game. His 26th career 100 yard day. 24 carries, 114 yards. Here he is again. Another first down. Harry Justin made the tackle. The Cardinals are controlling it with that man, number 32, Anderson, right now. He's hurting, but hanging tough. And one of the Seahawks is shaken up back at the 30 yard line. It's uh, Bruce Schultz, number 58. And you can see that Anderson, uh, as you mentioned, he's, he's hurting himself. He's had to go off several times, but they need him in there now. I tell you, that's a sign of a great player. He can come back and play under adversity. Look at him run. Seattle timeout is charged because of the injury in the last two minutes. 31-28, the Cardinals. If you're just joining us, the Cardinals have four touchdown passes to Roy Green. Seattle has three touchdown passes to Largent. It was 28-21 at halftime, a scoreless third quarter. Seattle with a touchdown in the fourth period. The Cardinals with a field goal of 33 yards by Neil O'Donoghue. That's the difference in this game. Coming up on Friday night, prime time for you. This is Friday, November the 25th. You'll want to join us for a boxing special. Undefeated WBC heavyweight champion Larry Holmes, who's now 44-0, faces unbeaten Marvis Frazier, the son of the former heavyweight champ Joe Frazier. A 12-round bout live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Friday night, November 25th, right here on NBC. Well, there's 58 Schultz who's being assisted off to the sideline. Let's watch again as Otis Anderson runs his football. We mentioned before he's been banged up. He's had to go off the field, but look at the way he just drives. Keeps running, big, strong, powerful legs. Lunging for that extra effort. First and 10 from the 19, and there it is again. Anderson, and Anderson is near the 15-yard line. Keith Butler, number 53, made the stop. They put the ball just outside the 15. And now another timeout. Well, Seattle is obviously trying to preserve a little time on this clock so they can get the ball back. It's a minute 28 to go. The problem is, though, is if they don't stop the Cardinals right here, they're really not going to have much time. They're not going to have any time at all if they don't stop up here. And you know, the way Otis is running that ball, the way his line is blocking, I think they've blocked so much better today than they did last week. Uh, last week, I think they gave up, was 
was it five sacks or uh, they had five turnovers, but they gave up a lot of sacks last week. They've done a much better job of blocking today. S Seattle needs to do something to try to disrupt that momentum to try to get that ball back. So we may see them blitz, start blitzing right now. I want to talk a little golf with you. That might be as fine a foursome as ever been put together. Arnold Palmer, Gary Player, Jack Nicklaus, Tom Watson. November 26 and 27, the skin game on NBC. And it comes your way on Thanksgiving weekend from the beautiful Desert Highlands Club in Scottsdale, Arizona. And you'll see it here on NBC. They're gonna get it on there. The skin game. We've got it going here at 31 to 28. The Cardinals, a minute 28 to play. Second and seven at the 16. Anderson again. Didn't get much. It's really tough going in there. And the clock stopped with a minute 23. Leading the way for the Seahawks, Keith Butler again. He's played a fine game today. And shaken up just a little bit, Shelton Robinson, 57. There's a final. The Kansas City Chiefs, John Makovic, they're playing good football. They stopped Cincinnati. The Bengals had been much improved of late. And we're still thinking playoff, but are derailed a little bit today. Seattle now is out of timeouts, Gene. We have a minute and 23 left to play. While we have a moment, our thanks to everybody here in the booth today. Nice to be working, as you mentioned, in my hometown. Getting to sleep in your own bed at night. That's very nice and great to have you here. And uh, our producer, Ron Kershaw, and veteran director, Dick Klein, and all the crew bringing you the sights and sounds of the National Football League in this interconference action here today. And to the support crew here in the booth, our thanks. It's been a lot of fun, and we've still got a minute and 23 of the regulation time. Well, there's, there's still plenty of time. Uh, I remember out in San Francisco in a playoff game against Dallas. About a minute and 20 to go. I'm sitting on the bench. We're going to play the Redskins the next week in the championship game. And Roger Stallman comes in, throws a touchdown onside, get it, and throws another one. All right, here is third down five. See if they give it to Anderson again. They do. not get the first down. Okay, well, now you would anticipate they'll kick the field goal. The game was down to the 12 yard line. Number 77 Jeff Bryant over there with Greg Gaines 56. And are they going to kick the field goal. They may not. They may just they may just take the penalty. They may stay out there and, and just take the penalty. Then they'll kick it. Clock is running down to 50 seconds and there's 14 seconds left. On the 32nd clock, now 10. All right, it is fourth and a long two. The handoff to Anderson. Doesn't get it. 32 seconds left to play. And Harris and Green make the tackle on Anderson. And right now, Seattle needs a couple of big plays, the kind that they had earlier when Craig and Largent got together for two big strikes and they moved right down the field. The problem is that they have no timeouts left. So if they throw the ball down the field and in a prevent situation, the place that's open is in the middle of the field. So if they get a completion, they have no timeouts left. They're really going to have to hustle down to try to get another couple plays off. Chicago defeats Philadelphia, and here Craig throws down the middle, and it was almost intercepted. He was trying to get it to Kurt Warner. Lee Nelson got his hand on it. That Chicago final again, 17 to 14. Chicago over Philadelphia, and Houston. Houston has won it, 27. 17 over Detroit. How about that? Ch big day for Chuck Studley and his group down there. Earl Campbell's been all upset, but they won a big one. Here it's 31-28. 26 seconds left. Again, the area that's usually open is down the middle. 
Yeah, I think he's going to have to take his chances. Out of the shotgun, Craig. Throwing long. Warner, incomplete. Well, he's tried to go to Warner on two plays. This is Jay Randolph along with Gene Washington, Bush Stadium in St. Louis. 19 seconds left in regulation time. The Cardinals lead Seattle 31 to 28, a day when the Cardinals have had four touchdown passes from Neil Lomax to Roy Green. Seattle, three touchdown passes, Dave Craig to Steve Largent. Right there, Mr. Fixit of the National Football League. Chuck Knox, his club, coming in here six and four, down by three right now, facing third and 10 from their 14-yard line. Gene, they're out of timeouts and they're in deep trouble. Well, he's going to have to throw it down the middle. The only problem is no timeouts. Even with the completion, they're going to have to hurry down and try to get another play off. Oh. Safety! Safety! Two points are added onto the board for the Cardinals. And with 11 seconds left to play, the Cardinals have got a big victory here as David Galloway came back there to make the play. The sixth sack of the game for the Cardinal crew. Two points, 33 to 28. And this is a big win for the Cardinals and a very disappointing day for Seattle. Well, Seattle is coming into this game off of a couple of big victories over the Raiders, over Denver. This is a situation that's it's a normal situation where you might be a little flat, but I don't think this is their problem because everybody was talking about how important this game is. What happened is that the Cardinals have played so well. The offensive line has played well. Lomax has just been phenomenal. Of course, Roy Green, I haven't seen a display like he's put on a day here by a receiver in years. I think Paul Warfield was the last guy I saw to have a day like he's had. You saw a very happy Jim Hannafin coming onto the field. Norm Johnson will put the ball in play. And we can anticipate an onside kick, of course. They have to put the ball in play either by punting it or kicking it. Normally a team would punt. It is legal, of course, to do an onside kick. And we're going to see exactly what Norm Johnson is going to do. There it is. Tilly has it as the Cardinals anticipated the onside kick. They had their skill people in there, and little Pat Tilly got it with 10 seconds remaining. Neil Lomax has had a splendid day. You folks in the Portland area saw him, of course, perform for Portland State magnificently in his collegiate days. Otis Anderson comes back into the game. Good job, Joe Dolan. Well, there's a happy Jim Hannafin. His team, Tilly. Has, his team has played very well today. Pat Tilly, when he took that ball, was shaken up quite a bit, but he hung in there. The Cardinals are going to be four, six, and one. Seattle, six and five. Well, it runs out, and uh, the Cardinals win it 33 to 28. This is the second meeting between the two teams back in 76. The Cardinals won 30 to 24 in the opener that year at Seattle. A big day for Anderson. Hannafin and Knox, good friends. Have a word. St. Louis 33, Seattle 28. Well, Gene, it was an enjoyable ball game, and we saw some magnificent individual performances, and then we saw the Cardinal defense do an excellent job in the second half. But both teams played good defense in the second half. But the thing that happened today, the receivers from both teams, both Largen and Roy Green, just played spectacular. Here we see Bubba Baker, Bubba Baker and the crew, and then coming in, that's number 65. It's Dave Galloway, the man who, who catches Craig back there for the safety. Then Roy Green, what a day he had. Four touchdowns, incredible performance, and then of course Largen with three touchdowns. We'll remind you that next Sunday, the Cardinals 
will be involved with another AFC club. Their former coach Don Coriel brings the Chargers in. The disappointing and bagged up Chargers will meet Dallas at Jack Murphy Stadium later today. The Seattle Seahawks play the Broncos at Mile High Stadium in Denver. The Broncos going against the Raiders today. There you see the scoring in this one 33 to 28 Largent visiting there with Tilly and Lomax as a little picture taking session is going on but Largent had himself a fine day so did Green the Cardinals have had some inconsistency on offense we talked about the turnovers and takeaways but today Lomax with Roy Green was a very special show here he is.